Hello, hello, good morning, everybody. I am uh, just getting quickly set up in terms of all the stream and everything. Um, there's a couple of a couple of little hiccups this morning with with the stream. I was trying to share it on my other page on this, um, down your page, down your art page, but um, wasn't working so well. Um, so I just like to welcome everybody. Thanks for coming along. I'm uh, for those of you who are new. My name's Darren. I am a um, watercolor artist from Melbourne, Victoria, and I run a lot of these live online workshops, these online watercolor workshops and line wash workshops. And uh, my, I'm basically here just to show you some of the the steps and the, the the kind of approaches that I have to transforming some of these reference photos and scenes into um, lovely watercolor paintings so i've got a whole bunch of you know this is probably not the best camera angle I've, i'm trying to get a second camera set up to look at me from an angle because you see all this stuff in the way so it's really not ideal but i know some of you wanted to have a look and, and um not have a look but uh, yeah just see who's who's doing the talking and um so i pop the camera up there so i'm gonna get started and um before i do actually i'm gonna go through just a few little little sketches that I've done in the past couple of days. Um, if you're here, make sure you let me know in the chats if the audio, the camera gear is all okay. I can see it fine sort of from my end. Um, I know there was a comment a moment ago just about the audio. So let me know how you, let me know how it is now. I hope it's, hope it's uh, sort of corrected itself. And yeah, I, uh, Basically, the, the same same thing goes for all the previous um, sessions. You know, if you have any questions, just put it in the chats and um, let me know if, if, you know, even during the during the painting, I'm happy to check on it every now and then and uh, answer your questions. Um, so let me know what whereabouts are you watching from in the comments. I've also got a bit of hay fever today. So if you hear me sneezing or in clearing my throat and stuff like that, uh, it's, it's getting quite warm here in Melbourne. In fact, I'll probably turn on the air conditioning uh, soon if it doesn't if it doesn't get any better so uh, thank you all for coming along so today we're going to be doing a couple of scenes so this one on the top right hand corner uh, it, it's basically a reference picture of a tea garden also got a, a scene of um, Cairo a couple of my viewers have requested uh, for me to do these scenes I've never done these before I've done a similar scene to uh, this this um, Japanese tea garden sort of scene um, but we're going to use this as a as a little warm-up and then we'll get into the second one later and also I'm going to let you guys decide for my second painting of Cairo whether you want me to do it in line wash or whether you just want me to do it in watercolors because quite frankly I couldn't decide this morning so I've got a I've got a large bit of paper that I've taped up separately for that one um, so let me know let me know what you think and um, I'm going to have a look at what's going on here in the chat. So we've got Nikki. How are you going, Nikki? And Yvonne here is, uh, Yvonne's here here as well. And uh, Nikki's, Nikki's saying, typically, how many pictures do you do a day? You mean like how many sketches do I do a day? It's, uh, well, it really, really depends. Uh, for these sort of sketches here, like this one took me, I'll just turn the photo a little bit, um, kind of like this. That one took me about, half an hour, half an hour-ish to, to sketch through. So it really depends on how much detail I'm going, um, I'm trying to achieve. So yeah, I'll normally paint, I'll normally paint like at least once a day, or if I don't paint every day, I'll do a big marathon. So every second second day I'll jump on and then I'll, I'll um, go through doing three, maybe three or four paintings sometimes. So it just depends on how I'm, I'm feeling, Nikki. Um, so there's a few more, a few more um, chats. So uh, just, you know, just bring the computer a little bit closer. Kind of see. So Angela says, I only have watercolor pencils and canvas tracing paper, but no tracing pattern for the class. Uh, tried looking two hours ago and couldn't find it. Okay, it's in the discussions um, section. So that, that that's uh, going to just be pinned up. So if you look on the discussion section um of the facebook page you'll be able to see sorry the facebook event and the live stream you'll be able to see a link to the discussion section of the event so it's in there um carla says uh yeah carla's here as well 
and uh oh good also got angie angie norheim here in the chats as well we've also got margaret margaret mcfadden so good good morning margaret good to see you again and um turning up again and again and i know you know looking you know you've sent me a few sort of comments in a few of your paintings and it you know starting out watercolors is very tricky and um you should be very proud of yourself for 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 coming along every week and i know you weren't too happy with some of your last paintings but keep you know keep up with it remember watercolors is probably one of the hardest uh, i think it's probably the, the hardest medium i've ever had to learn so it it takes time for you to to get a hang of it um so don't give up keep on keep on going um we've also got angie oh sorry angie's just saying um good evening from indiana usa um amy 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 Venskus, uh, audio is fine, picture is sideways. <laughs> yep, I painted it sideways. Let me put something else in the view. Uh, just show you some of the other things I've done as well. Here are a couple others that I've painted recently. Um, we've also got Amy, uh, sorry, Amy. So Amy's from New York. And so, and we've got um, Ray J. Hi, and thank you from Buffalo, um, NY, New York. Uh, me. The Josephine lies uh, dirty, uh, do dirty, painting is sideways. Okay, um, I hope it's all looking looking all right now. It was sideways only because it's the situation uh, I just painted in portrait style the other day. We've also got Carla, Carla Rackley from Winter Park, Florida. How are you going, Carla? And uh, Angie says sounds work sounds working good. Okay, and um, in terms of that second second painting, I'll just remind everyone again that I'm going to be taking your suggestions um, on whether you want me to do that Cairo painting in line wash or whether you want me to do it in just wa pure watercolors. But I will be doing a, a quite a large scene of that. Okay, so um, it'll be exciting. I I don't really know exactly how it's going to turn out, but uh, I'm sure we're going to be good to go um james so james melton watching from roswell new mexico how are you going james um i'm not sure if i've seen you here before if, if it's your first time welcome thank you i uh, thank you for coming along um we got rose the computer screen's a little bit far away so i've got to sort of lean towards it rosabella uh, rosabella says watercolor only for the second one mm, okay so it's one for one let's see how we go bonnie parsons can see bonnie from uh, Plain Springs, California. We've got Cynthia, Cynthia Odess, Odess um, from New Hampton, US. Um, we've also got Doris. We've got Linda from Ohio. Um, but, uh, sorry, from Nevada. No, no, Rosella, uh, Roselba from um, Nevada. We've got also Susan Peterson from California. And Josephine um, from, from uh, Chicago, Illinois. So we've got some. Uh, Jackie from UK. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. And um, we're going to give this a crack. And this is Don's, um, Don's here as well. Uh, Don Johnson, one of our one of our members and viewers. Uh, he's from Little Rock, Kansas. Everything is uh, good from here. Looking forward to these. Really like red. And uh, wow, what is it? So you, you're talking about this one here. Um, uh, these two scenes or the... Or the scene I'm doing today, Don. But uh, I'll just, I'll, you know, these, this, these two here are some. I did this for the last live. This is the Rialto Fish Market in. I think it's a fish market. It's a Rialto market in in Venice. Um, and I took a reference picture that was a different perspective, and I had to just make up some of this stuff on the right hand side. So I did that live for the last one. You can check that out later if you want to have a look at it. Um, yeah, if you want to have a look at how I how I put that one together, I'm just tighten that camera a bit so it doesn't move around too much. This one here, um, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I know it's in Japan, and uh, it was a sketch that I did a couple of nights ago. So um, it's some kind of it's some kind of temple, and yeah, I, I used a I used some of the normal um, what is it the normal round nibbed pens, and then I also used a flat. A flat nibbed pen, something like this. So it kind of looks a bit like a sharpie um, to color in some of the black areas as well, darker areas in there. Um, I did this one, I think, a couple of nights ago as well. 
And um, I can't remember where this is. I, I, I think it's somewhere in France. I think it's somewhere in France. But I really I would like to get in some type of, you know, enormous shadow running across for that one. This one here is a little sketch I did last night. So I'm going to turn into some kind of some kind of painting later. So it didn't take me too long, probably about 20, 20 something minutes to draw that one in quickly. Um, so, uh, cool. So I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, there's a few more bits and pieces, a few more sort of chats that I'll, I'll go through and um, I'll let you guys sort of get ready, setting up as well. What, what you need in terms of this, in terms of this uh, class, now you need a, a bunch of pigment liners or if you've got some um, black ink pens, as long as the, ink's, the, the ink is permanent, really important that you, um, that you have that. Otherwise, it's going to move around and um, cause a bit of trouble when you start getting painting. Um, so if you don't want the ink to sort of move around, make sure that you are using a permanent, permanent ink pens. Uh, so these ones are liners 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.8. Um, I also have, uh, yeah, just normal uni ball pens. So this one here, these three here, which cost about $2 each if you go to your local office supply store. So for those of you who haven't been here before, I'll just quickly go through some some of the, the materials I use. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm actually going to use these ones that were given to me, uh, sent to me as a sample from Etcher. And then I've also got um, some of these flat, flat um, edged ones, which are kind of different, uh, but I, I quite like them actually. So they're, they're pigment liners, but they have a more flat edge to them. So <clears throat> now if you only have one pen, I'll just go, uh, just use what you have. Okay. Um, you really, to be honest, you only need one. So if you go to 0 0.5, that would do you fine. Um, same with if you go use any other nib, you with these pigment liners, you can sort of um, put them on their side a little bit and let it graze the paper. So you get, um, just to just get a, 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 a thinner line at times. Uh, it's just easier if you have some different sizes. Paper I'm using is 100% cotton paper. Um, this is a sketchbook that I, uh, that I made actually. So um, this is an old t-shirt that I used to wear when I was, uh, when I was like in my early 20s, so, um, you know, for those of you who like Aliens, a fan of the Alien series um, <laughs> movies, it's just what I, I thought I'd turn that into a sketchbook. And yeah, the all the pages I just made out of, there's about 40 something pages, I can't remember, but I've torn these by hand and um, turned them into um, pages that I've stitched together. There's tutorials that you can look up or I can make probably make something on it later if you guys are interested in knowing how to uh, make a, a watercolor sketchbook, you know. Um, so yeah, what am I going, what am I going on about? So the pens, paper and the paints I'm using, I'll just show you my palette. Um, so, you know, it looks a bit chaotic at the moment. I, I barely ever clean my palette. Um, this, there's a lot of colors on here. Uh, but remember, as a beginner, and especially for this class, you're not going to need all these colors. You just need a yellow, some kind of yellow, a blue, and a red. So if you've got like a, your, your three primaries, you're going to be completely fine. I've got things like neutral tint, which is a, it's almost like a convenience color. It's mixed of your three uh, primaries uh, mixed together, and they balance it out so that it's neither kind of warm or cool. So um, yeah, those are just some convenience colors. Neutral, just I've got two different neutral tints and some other one here. What's this? I think it's Payne's Gray. So I've also got a bit of lavender um, in here as well. So um, I'll go through the colors as I'm using it. But remember, as a beginner, and even later on when, you, when you've been painting for a while, um, yeah, I tend to use very few colors in my actual paintings. So I'll pick maybe four or maximum five colors that I'll use and um, refer to in my paintings and it just makes it easier to achieve some color harmony it just gets too complicated to balance everything out when you start using too many colors so that's just my my suggestion um a few comments here there's uh, amy amy says these are beautiful scenes and i like you to do kara and whatever style you use for them <clears throat> cool okay well, let's see how we go we'll do the first one first and i'll go from there like the colors says line wash for second one um, Carl's history sketch some of it. <clears throat> Virginia, Virginia says, stay 
with you a little bit uh speak english a little can i only observe is it possible to yeah so the replay is going to be available after virginia so yeah thank you for coming along and um yeah I, I, you, you know uh the i hope i hope i can explain things it's uh simply so, um as well so if you have any questions just let me know it's also sandy russell good to see sandy from southwest florida uh sandy says i've i've so much to catch up on to do and can't paint tonight but i'm looking forward to watching for a bit at least uh thank you for these great tutorials thank you sandy and um yeah i, I guess everyone's got got um stuff going on in life and uh, yeah, the good thing is that these replays are on later. It is it is nice in, um, to have you guys here though. Kind of eggs me on to continue, and um, yeah, it's good fun to answer the questions and and um, get your suggestions as well as I'm painting on, on what you think. So, um, fantastic, and I've got um, thank you. Uh, to Rena, Rena Bale sent sent seventy five stars on Facebook. Appreciate you, um, really appreciate that, Rena. Um, and welcome to the stream. So, I'm gonna get cracking. I think I've gone through the the chats already. Now, I like I said this morning, I had some issues trying to open up one of the streams. I streamed to multiple places. The one on my other, um my other page down your art. So if I'm not getting to your comments on there, I apologize for that. Um, I just could not get it to open and I don't know why. So, um, but I think I've got most of you here. Okay. Um, so let's have a bit of fun with this one. Now we're going to treat this as a, as a kind of warm up. Um, and now I've just actually realized that this painting of course is portrait, which means, um, I've got some decisions to make. Hmm. So, I think I'm actually going to actually change it around and have it um, have the scene landscape one for one for the ease of drawing. So I, uh, if I turn it portrait style, I'm going to I'm finding that it's going to have a bit of um, it's just a bit more difficult for me to center the camera that kind of thing. But also, I want to change the composition a little bit. I think maybe I use this as an opportunity to put a few more trees in. Um, yeah, it'll be good, and we can have the focal point here with the um with the actual building so let's go ahead now 0 0.5 0 0.5 liner I'm gonna start off first now um let's get cracking I'll bring up the the photo reference so have your reference up on the screen um there's a, a fair bit of detail especially in the, the the building here and that's what you need to focus on um, the trees and stuff a little bit, a little bit there, but we don't need to, we don't need to sort of um, fixate on it too much. Uh, so I'm just gonna check everything's going okay in the chats. Fantastic. Alrighty. Um, so uh, let's start off around about where we want the bottom of the building to finish. Okay. Um, now we want to leave a bit of sky. A little bit of sky and we also want to leave a, enough down the bottom for all these uh, shrubs and um looks like uh what do you call them those japanese maple trees that are kind of orangey in here i didn't notice that before actually um but anyway i'm gonna start putting in a little bit of these trees just just kind of like a a plan of where i want them to come in and exit so there i know here we want the um you know the the building so the base of the building um if you see where the all the hand sort of what do you call it the the railing here um that's what i'm doing here with this line I, i'm just trying to estimate where i want to place that line um and then of course we've got the roof as well so we've got a fair bit to, to estimate and put in here. So I think I'll just put a line around about here. Okay. Um, and because this is landscape style, it's not going to be exact as well. There's gonna, we're probably going to be squeezed for a bit of room um, up the top. Uh, so let's start off with that line where that handrail area is just like that, sort of creeping behind that bush there. Um, and uh, let's put in. 
uh, some of the top parts so something like this okay just a bit of that the railing for the um there and we've also got you know sections like this two three um there and and don't feel you have to get it right to start 100 right to start off with i'm going if you notice i'm going super light um so that it doesn't um affect too much if i you know if i get a line in uh, inaccurately that sort of thing but this sort of one line of blue and then another red sort of pillar underneath um let's have a look that there are a few of these kind of red bits sticking out like this 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 bit here there okay um good now i'm not going to really bother too much with all that the details and stuff in there might go through that a, a bit later let's start putting in some of the details um of the next floor so put that just a little line running across like this yeah okay and this is the area just behind um so we've got a door here a bit of a like a, i think it's a door there so just running behind that railing and you can also start putting in that railing in a bit more with a bit more strength too okay so bring that across like this there um it's actually a middle one middle bar kind of thing coming across there a bit of wood there there okay that's that's looking all right and then the door we've got the frame of the door like this um really just a rectangle just look at it as a as a as a rectangular shape there and then we've got another one here okay it kind of actually goes into the uh, behind a tree or a bush or something which i'm gonna um perhaps extend that over later um okay and then we've got this area at the top now there's, there's lots of little details in this scene. So to simplify it down, um, we want to look at those basic shapes. So, you know, we've got an area here with the railing, the top, it's kind of like a squarish sort of shape. And then it kind of goes up here um, into the rooftop, um, something like this. And then we've got a section of it that just comes out here um, on top. I'm trying to estimate exactly where to bring this out as well. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Doors, and then we want an extra. So this section above the doors, these two wooden, I don't know what they are, but these two wooden kind of planks separate out. Um, and there's even a, there's even some pillars that just run down. There's a pillar that runs down here. Well. Okay, this roof is going to be tricky. Now, if we look at it, it's almost like a certainly is a like a a square or a rectangular uh, sort of shape, trapezoidal shape. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that I'm estimating this in correctly. This line on top, and then I'm going to add this line here. This will be kind of the bottom of the roof. This line here. All this stuff kind of goes behind the. Um, in there anyway uh, let's have a look we've got a bit of that out there yeah, this top bit here and this is just like a triangle triangular shape runs up like this comes down up yeah comes down to the yeah. edge of the roof yes yeah okay and uh, there's a whole bunch of things it's kind of um i don't know exactly what they are but it's just the structure of the building these kind of roll rolly like um structures up the top um of course bottom part yeah. top part of the roof and um 
this kind of goes across like this yeah so if you look at these two edges here it forms like it comes on a bit of an angle so it's a trapezoidal trapezoid shape for the uh, for that sex section of the roof okay a lot of it's obscured actually in um in here but um you know you can see there's certainly part of this roof just peeking out there um and then even this part of the 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 temple it's kind of got a you know it's kind of basically just a square cube so might put in a few little lines running across the side there but look a lot of this stuff in the side i'm gonna just get in with uh just gonna put in some trees and things getting in the way um we're gonna detail this bit here on top it's just a triangle just look at it as a triangle and we know there's another layer that runs underneath like this um let's have a look over here we will bring this across there Right, good. Um, I've made the roof probably a bit, a little bit wider. Now this top bit of the roof a bit wider than I, than I than I should. But you know, it doesn't matter. Kind of would look like it's from a slightly different angle. There you go another one here. This section here, um, bringing that down as well. There's a yeah, another kind of shape underneath there. Okay. It doesn't matter all that much. We're just indicating and then we will go through with the watercolors and put in a fair bit of those details afterwards. So just defining some of these edges of these lines more. So the roof is so crucial. Um, as long as that roof is defined, it's going to look like a building. So certainly put a bit of extra time into drawing it if you, if you can. Um, you know, bits of it are obscured. So this part of that roof, for example, um, you know, kind of obscured coming around the edge like that. So tiny bits of indications. Um, might be, yeah, that side of it, I'm really not going to bother all too much. We'll get in some of this kind of um, leaf like shapes and stuff. You know, we've maybe got a, you know, look, it's just a branch or something coming in from the, in the corner I'll scribble in a few little bits and pieces here okay come out of the seam like this as well yeah so line works a bit I don't have the best line work this morning um for some reason but I think that's gonna do me okay There's going on here yeah. and what you do with the with the branches just split it off in a in a section so it goes up and then it splits into two and that's how i do uh, branches and stuff like that and join them on with others i mean this one it could be a branch coming in here from the edge um like this as well so i'm going to join them all on like that i've gone into the other page okay so um again this stuff here it's all just um all just more foliage and stuff and just here's there's little bits of scribble really okay um, and, and uh, the, the aim of this is just to help me place where i want all the uh, it's a tree and stuff like that now this side this stuff uh, here this this part of the building goes down further to like around here and we got all this detail in here. We've got so much going on in here. And, and the one thing I can suggest to you is um, simplify, simplify it down. I mean, if you really look at it, it's just another layer. It's kind of similar to the top layer. Um, you know, this area here also, I do find that um, it can be a little bit tricky, but with, there are some of these lines running across. Oops. The lines actually come upwards like this, slightly on an angle like that. Kind of move upwards there. Yeah. Okay. Um, section here runs underneath. So, and all this stuff underneath here, um, you, you know, 
it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on in there and there's certainly there's certainly a lot but i'm just going to shade it all down and simplify it okay just put a bit of shade in there there are some kind of these arch like shapes like this in that section as well um which we can emphasize i'm going to just bring out this also this little pillar um running horizontally just a bit more as well um if i've got swap over to this this one of these smaller pens this is probably going to help as well um also got shinolan good morning shinolan from um from colorado watching good to see you again Doris is here. Good to see Doris is uh, Manu. Manu from the Philippines. I think you're new. Um, Man, um, sorry, Memu. Memu from the Philippines. So, uh, welcome to the welcome to the live. Um, Virginia says Virginia says thanks, and uh, we're going to continue. We're going to continue on um, with this one. Let's see where I was up to. Now I was picking up a smaller pen. This is just a flat, flat nibbed pen to see if I can get in some, just a bit of shading and things and areas. Like for example, here, I can just outline a bit of that side of the rooftop, bit in here um, and there. Uh, what else do we have a bit underneath here of the roof? In that corner now you don't need to use a pen like this if you've just got your your normal um, nib pen just use that you just it does take a bit longer to to do it but um you can get the same result basically it's just quicker and um i'm just trying to get in the edge of this what's going on with this pen edge of this building That across like that. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Might extend this one out a little bit further. Well, the side of the the rooftop, and the reason. Um, reason why I'm doing that is yeah the roof here on the left I've kind of made that probably a bit larger than I should have or longer I mean there we go um and a few of these lines as well Good. More darkness. Even in here, it'd be nice to just. Buff that section up a little. That. Okay. Doors here. Righto. Just take your time in terms of like putting in some of these shapes and things in here. Uh, there's no rush, and there's certainly no um, pressure to get in all of the these details as well. Just pick out bits and pieces and indicate. That's the best way to to do it um, until it starts looking like what you want it to look like. And um, you want basically get the side of that side of it outlined more. Now that you get a bit more confident in what areas to put in there. Okay, now there's a couple of these planks that sort of stick out like that. This is like a kind of, a, I don't know, edge of the, the building there, the edge kind of Find it there, yeah, something like that. Uh, there's a pillar 
underneath quite a large pillar that in put in a few more of these kind of like a plank like one in there and there's another one like this like this but a pillar just running down like this um i can make one up just another one here and the interesting thing I, you know, um, about this section here is then I can use that black pen to color in between and get some uh, additional contrasts, um, which I really like. So I'm going to make some of this stuff up. Like I don't even know if the structure of the building looks like, like this. Uh, it even makes sense, but uh, I think we can kind of get away with it. Um, so this is what I mean. But uh, that aged pen, same thing as what I did up the top. This okay. that goes off into the side there. Okay, and now uh, this blends in with nature. That's the, the the great thing about this scene. We've got um, a man-made object with interacting with nature. Um, it just there's just this beautiful sort of foliage and things here so on one hand you you get the practice of doing a, a shape like this a, a complicated um tricky sort of shape like that and then you get um, the ability to, to to practice some of these um other softer looking shapes and it's not to say that I'm I'm gonna completely, uh, you know, finish that one off. We can still go into it after and get some more, a little bit more detail in if you want later on. Um, it's just a, it's a good starting point I think for what we have um, as a drawing. I think we need to have some. Kind of representation of what's going on but um you know this is certainly not 100 percent representational it's kind of coming on it definitely is coming on an angle um and more of these trees and things there's one here there's a bit coming behind there um there you know we've got a tree that's coming up like this let me just use and remember when you've got stuff in the background you want it to go back a bit more just use a smaller nib so that will help to push it back. Okay, it's a bit of this tree trunk going up, and it is just um, cutting through. Okay, and then we've also got another tree. Um, it it comes out of the the scene, but I can emphasize it more. This one kind of cuts over that tree. There, remember, have a look at the scene and just estimate where you want the branches to um, splinter off and go to. This one here, I'm just making it go a bit there, and then I think I'm going to need another one that comes out here. And don't ask me how I, I, I choose the direction of how these um, branches sort of go. I just look at the scene, look at it, st sit back from a distance and just see, because if I make this all go down, it's going to start obscuring the view. Um, but I want this to be a kind of little glimpse in this section, and we're going to have a lot of um, light and warmth in here, and then we've got the greens around. So it's almost going to be darker around, and then a bit of a focal point in that section. Okay, so all the basically just um, as I'm drawing, I'm I'm always just composing in my mind what I want the final result to to look like. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think it starts in the mind. Um, art and painting drawing whatever whatever you want to indicate to this one i've kind of joined them together and i feel like i shouldn't have done that but you know maybe it's a good idea maybe it's uh it can turn out okay afterwards um everything kind of joins up anyway there we go look at this we've got a bit of this uh, tree and um foliage and things all coming across what have we got? We've got another tree. Uh, it's kind of got a it has another branch that cuts across there and comes out of the scene up the top like that. Um, it's quite a large tree actually. 
don't know what exactly I'm going to do to fill up all this space here on the left. I'm just going to have to put in more trees and shrubs and stuff like that. Uh, but it doesn't make a huge difference. I think just making sure that we've got some larger ones um, is going to help. And simplifying down as well. So here I've just put in the top of the tree there. Um, that's all going to be hopefully the same color. Um, bring this this trunk down like this there um, yeah it, you know if you've got shapes that slowly uh, you know increase in size that's going to in that's going to indicate a sense of um, sense of uh, depth in your drawing or painting or whatever and you know don't feel like you have to do all these um, trees going in the same direction as well look this one's kind of coming off on an odd angle I'm going to get this to kind of bisect, not bisect, but overlap, overlap with that one here in the background, that one there. And uh, it kind of comes all the way across the scene. And maybe, again, we're going to have some, um, you know, shrubs and bits and pieces overlapping with these ones. So it's not all just uh, trees running through, but some circular sort of shapes and things in the background like that. Um, Here's another one there, another layer of this, these layers of um, bushes, shrubs, whatever you want to call them. And there's a big one here in the foreground. Hold the pen on the end. If you hold the pen at the end, you're going to be able to get in more of a, a looser line for sure. And um, it's, you know, you don't want too much structure in these areas. We've got we've got so much structure in here. We need to balance it out with a little less structure up the top here, um, and even these branches and stuff. There's leaves that just sort of connect it on with them. So the bit of this is just going to simplify it down. Okay, draw some more branches. And I don't want to overdo it as well. Let's get in a branch maybe coming out like this. Um, just to balance, but all these branches coming across, interacting, coming through here, I think, um, yeah, I just need a bit of balance here. Uh, do I want to put another tree in? Let me just, let me just put in some more of these bits of shrubs and stuff first. And this is how you, you kind of get this overlapping kind of effect, like what I'm doing here. Um, you're just drawing kind of like circles that are overlapping semicircles that are just overlapping like that okay um fantastic so that's looking all right uh i think what might be desirable is some smaller trees in the background yeah not put in really too many of these smaller trees on that side of the, the scene um some background trees, maybe one, a branch or something coming in here and interacting. Another another bit coming through here like that. This one's too rigid. Um, there. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Do we want anything coming behind? Somewhere here. Uh, getting very close to the to the scene. Um, I think we'll actually run with what we have here. I'll get in some more detail later with the watercolors. Uh, um, we don't need to draw everything in. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. Uh, so, you know, really now is just the finishing touches. If you want to put in a bit of um, some darks underneath here, for example. Little darks. Um, running over underneath this section, not true to the um, reference 100%, but um, I'm looking really just at tonal, where, you know, the light and the dark areas on this scene and just trying to indicate a bit of that, okay. Um, yeah, this is going on here, bit of scribble. Okay, so we know there's going to be a shadow underneath each of these uh, segments. Okay. 
I'm gonna use your last opportunity just to get in um, some details and things you might want to put in there. Um, so just about done, everyone. Um, can you let me know how you're doing? And if you're keeping up, if uh, this is all kind of making sense to you at the moment, um, probably the hardest thing in this scene, and I, I underestimated, I really underestimated this, and it's meant to be a warm up, but this um, pagoda is, <laughs> is quite tricky. There's so much going on in here. So, um, yeah, definitely underestimated this one. But uh, it's good practice, guys. More detail here. There. So that it sticks out more. Okay. Good. Um, let's go ahead and get painting. And to start off with, I'm going to get some a uh, bit of color. Okay. A little bit of color here. And um, a few, few more uh, comments. There's James. James Melton says, wow, what a start. I wanted to try and sketch it early, but found both very challenging and intimidating. I may just um, just sit this one out and watch. Uh, look, um, I, I think this is a, certainly a, a tricky, certainly a tricky reference. Um, but if we simplify, I think if we simplify things down, and that's kind of like a triangle on a bit of a trapezoid shape, then we've got a square here, and then... Um, this section here, which is again kind of like a rectangular shape with another um, bit like a pillar sticking out the side. Um, all the little lines and things like that, honestly, some of it I just make up along the way. Um, it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a never ending task if you're trying to um, get that reference picture in. A representation of that just making it look too much like the reference um, i'll be here all day so and i don't want that so i always try to look for the easiest way to simplify simplify down a scene but um thank you james virginia virginia bay um a bit bit the loyal the loyal um and uh oh i think you had to leave because you were um you're watching along see you and margaret says okay margaret's going okay keeping up so far awesome right oh right oh so um let's go ahead and get started on the the um the scene now i'm going to use a smaller brush this here is a number six uh round brush uh and i'll bring up so I'm gonna bring up the scene a bit closer. Let's see, make sure you guys can see okay. Um, alrighty. Now, we want some colors in here. I'm gonna just use some straight up orange and reds. So we've got a lot uh, of reds and things. So example here, up the top, up the top here, there's a bit of orange here, that down. Okay, and I'm using them just straight from the palette. I don't want to mix it with anything. Okay, just straight from the palette there. Underneath here, believe it or not, it's mostly just red and orange. Okay, in there, and, the, and um, it kind of goes around the edge here as well. The great thing is that some of this is going to overlap with the, um, with the, what do you call it? The, the trees and stuff like that, which are going to be green. So we've got complementary, some nice complementaries. There's even some yellows running through here, some really light yellows and, and things like that, which we can just drop in uh, to indicate. But um, I'm, I'm really just simplifying this as much as I can down, painting most of it the same color, okay? There. There. And I can skip over some bits as well. We don't have to paint the whole lot in. Um, as we move down the page, it kind of gets a bit lighter. But I will actually drop in a bit of neutral tint on that top section as well so that it's not all the same color. Um, this part comes down. It's all uh, it's quite a lot going on in here, actually. 
In fact, there are, if you look closely, there's this kind of um, cooler color running through this section. And I, I can, what I'll do is I'll grab a smaller brush. I've got a little number four round brush. I got this new color yesterday, not yesterday, but a few days ago called lavender. And um, it's this beautiful, beautiful light um, color, light sort of purple color. Um, very hard to re-wet though. I'm going to just get a bit of it here. I think this will look great. It kind of replicates whatever that color is inside. So tiny bit there, tiny bit there, bit here, bit here. My, and the aim is to get this to kind of melt together as well. So um, there's a bit running underneath here. Okay, just a little bit here. And this will hopefully dry off slightly um, as well. So then um, it doesn't disappear once I go in. It's a, it's a very warm day. Here in Melbourne, a bit of red in here. Drag some of this color across. Got some neutral tint as well, which I can just use to drop in some up the top, little bit of darkness up the top in here. Okay, underneath, I'm implying some darks under there. Okay, simplify. Just simplify. Um top sections as well of the scene here yeah, there's this is going to be a little bit darker this uh this area so i'm going to drop that neutral tint in and hopefully we get a bit of mixing which i'm looking forward to uh, maybe some ultramarine blue a little bit more ultramarine blue running through there as well some mixing that is still wet that bottom layer is still wet Okay, but hopefully this kind of mixes up into a bit of a purplish color. This is how some of it's starting to um, creep across in there. Doesn't matter, just let it let it do it. Let it do its thing. There. Um, rooftop again, neutral tint. Perhaps more blue. A little bit more blue in here. Like that. Um, there. Where's that neutral tint? Let's drop some more. Yeah. And um, some running up the side here. There, but preserving bits of that orange as well. There, there, bit here. Um, bringing that down. That bit more orange in here. Orange there. That. Um, and inside it's just a kind of color. I'll color a bit of that in that bit more orange or red there. Drop some of that in. Need some more red on the edge. Darker red. Okay. We're getting there. Getting there. Um a bit of the edge of that building like that. And you know, you'll notice some bits and pieces in here which we can get through in a gouache as well. Um, I want to carry this warm wash down the page. Okay, so, um, but before I do, if I can get some yellows, just a little bit of yellow. Um, ooh, just got to. Um, Bit of a message, uh, chat from Chanel and trying to catch up. I'm um, trying to catch up with the drawings has been a bit difficult because my uncle's in the hospital. Oh, sorry. I'm really sorry to hear that, Chanel, and I hope, um, hope things go go okay with him. And uh, yeah, I, I noticed some of you haven't been in and out, so um, yeah. Not really much to say about that. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope um, hope things get better. And um, yeah, I guess sometimes art can can give you a little bit of a um, you know a bit of some time to to um, uh, I guess take your mind off um, some of these things. So I appreciate you being here, and I really um, wish the best for you and your your family. And. Okay, okie dokie. Um, there, uh, Rose, uh, 
Rosalba. Rosalba says, not sure how mine is going to end, but I'm just going to have fun with it. That's a, that's a great attitude, um, Rosalba. I, I really am not sure how mine's going to end as well. I've got a basic idea of what it's going to look like. Um, it's just like a basic idea, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of letting it lead me in a, in a way. So sometimes you have an idea of what you want, but then when you end up actually executing it, it, it changes or you make mistakes um, or you think, hey, actually my initial idea was not the best. So you kind of got to adapt. I think that's um, that's one of the struggles because with watercolors, you, you, I can't think of a time where everything has just gone well. Even in these lives, uh, I make a whole bunch of mistakes and you guys probably, some of you pick up, but um, I certainly do. Uh, just have fun and and enjoy the process enjoy um yeah just enjoy the process i think that's the the reason at the end of the day why we do art to learn and to relax and to improve so remember it's it's a it's an endeavor that takes years and years you get the hang of especially watercolors and one thing that 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 does that gets to me is sometimes you see people who start off and um and i was like this as well i i stopped and start quite constantly with watercolors it just frustrated uh, just frustrated me um badly to begin with because um the lack of control how just do what it wants to do. And um, so this red here is, by the way, it's um, the red and orange is pyrrole red and pyrrole orange. I uh, sorry, pyrrole scarlet, pyrrole orange, in case you guys are wondering. Okay. But we've got a lot of this in already. I mean, a lot of this uh, area of, uh, of the reds and stuff. And there's only so much detail that you can get in one wash. So there's darks and things in here, but I'm not going to put those in until a little bit later. Um, I've done a bit of that blending here up the top, but apart from that, um, there's not much else that I want to put in there. So um, using a larger sort of um, brush now, what I'm going to do is um, start by actually adding in some of the trees and real quickly, so I've got a number 10 brow brush. Raw umber, a bit of raw umber. And let's put in a bit of a bit of this for the tree. Okay, I've got also some burnt sienna. Some of that burnt sienna would be nice. Just to get in some branches uh, for the trees. Okay. I've got this other color here, interesting color called geoth. Geoth uh geothite. Um just some kind of mineral, mineral paint. So um, I'm hoping we can get a bit of granulation actually with this paint. I, I love the, I did try this out on a separate sheet of paper and there's some fantastic granulation going on. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, Carol says, would you please include the reference photo so I can uh, try this later? Yes, uh, so so Carol, the references, if you look, uh, there's a pinned comment to this uh, event. And if you scroll right up to the top of the page, or it should actually um, be there, it's in the discussions tab of the actual event. If you can't find it, message me later, and I will send it to you. Um, with Facebook, it's a bit tricky. It's, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit tricky because they only let me upload it to certain certain sections um even in the chats here i can't upload the reference picture right now uh, into the chat so i would prefer to do that so yeah it's in that discussions tab as a pinned comment so uh yeah if I have any issues just let me know later um, james is also saying in the youtube you can see reference photos under the community tab so yeah that thank you james for suggesting that i i post them to both and um endeavor to to get a bit more uh a bit more organized with that as well i know i sort of 
at times forget to upload to one or the other, but it's always, it certainly is always in the Facebook discussions um, uh, before I get started uh, for every live. So uh, yeah, it just Facebook can be a bit difficult, can be a bit difficult to navigate around at times and find what you need. Uh, so um, again, I'm just going through with some of this detail and I've, I've got this really cool color here. It's, it's, um, it's like a quinacridone gold. Um, it's, it's, it's actually uh, one of the Australian brands. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't really know, I don't work with them or anything like that, but it's a beautiful quinacridone gold. They call it Australian red gold. Um, if you can see here, it's this, it, it can start off as almost a, looks like a brown kind of color. And then you water it down and it becomes look at that just this beautiful light yellow kind of color but when you apply it initially it's, it's um incredible so um you know i did say obviously we, we want to try not to use too many colors but if the colors are in the same sort of family um and they complement each other I, I love to mix them around with each other like this and see what happens um, so especially near the sky here, I'll put a bit more of this, this quinacridone color, woody sort of color, maybe a bit over on that right hand side as well, um, like that. And this is going to help because I'm going to get some lavender in the sky. My new color that I'm absolutely obsessed with, the, the lavender. And I know, you know, skies aren't normally uh, that color. You can get skies that color depending on the time of the day or where you're kind of located. But I absolutely am obsessed with this color. Uh, so I've been, um, I've been <laughs> using it quite a lot actually. So, you know, as you can see, I'm just using all these browns and they're basically we've got raw umber here i've got i've got um geoth geothite the mineral mineral paint and a bit of this australian red gold color amazing amazing color um i'm gonna get some more of it at some stage uh look at that we've got something emerging we've got some branches and things emerging and Drop in a bit, bit of color if you'd like, a bit more there. That's not the only chance you can go in there a second time. Now, we want some complementaries here. A bit of green. This here is uh, some sap green. I've also got a bit of uh, emerald green here. A bit of emerald green. Just dropping that in. Okay. And hopefully, some of this will mix in with the red and you might think why would you want why would you want that to happen <laughs> and the, the reason why i i let things mix um by themselves a bit on the paper is that they create some beautiful soft edges and colors tertiary colors that you just can't mix even if you even if you tried i mean you probably could but you'd spend a you spend a lifetime trying to do it so that's why I let things overlap and, and also it aids in the composition because I want something that's more um, tied together. You know, I don't want this building to just stick out and look kind of isolated there. We want the colors to overlap. This increases that sense of um, uh, continuity in your painting where one object begins and another one starts uh, and another one stops, you know. But then we've got sections here, for example, where I, I want it to be sharper. Just checking how dry that paint, paint is here. I want this area to be sharper, which means I'm going to need to use a little bit more neutral tint and be a bit more careful. Now, because if we do everything wet into wet, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that we're going to lose this suddenly we're not going to have a building there anymore. So it's a, it's like kind of a, um, should I say, it's a kind of balance in wet, uh, soft, wet and wet edges and then edges that are a bit more 
harder. So yeah, I'm just going to try it. Okay, this doesn't always work, but we can cut around. Here we can cut around that green, that uh, green, the um, the red, like that. Here, bit here, leaving those little red pillars. Oops, see that one started to go across. I made a bit of a mistake there, but we um, just a bit there, but not eliminating all that red. Sometimes you can leave a little line, um, little white line to separate out like that. Okay, just a bit there. That's it. That's it. That's all you really need to do for that section. Okay. Uh, you can apply the same technique to move upwards in this section here, for example. Um, and I'm using a relatively large brush because I don't want to obsess over it. I've fallen into that trap too many times of obsessing over a certain part of the painting. And then it just turns into um, it turns into something that's uh, too tortured and overworked. So a little bit of darkness in here. Okay. So just indicating some of that tree trees and things over in the background. Get there. You know, this here behind um, is going to be interesting. I mean, it's just a bit of red, isn't it? Just left some white there. Um, but I'll drag a little bit of color across like that. I didn't want that to be all the same tone. So drag that across. A bit of mixing. Um, the windows, the doors in there are also kind of a purplish color. So I can use some of this, um, what is it, ultramarine with a bit of the pyral scarlet. Let's drop some of that in here. My foot's going numb. There we go. And just leave it. Let it, let it, uh, let it do its thing. So, have a look around here. Any sharp objects uh, sort of around the fence? Well, have a bit of a, a bit of a play around. Um, we've got some here, we've got some here. Here, we can just again emphasize the overlap trees and things there. Okay. Um, I'm sure I'm sure you get the, the point. Um, I'm going to speed things up a lot now and just pick up more green. Drop that in here. Okay. This is just sap green. Yeah. Let's mix some of that in and mix some of this in here. Okay. Some of the trees, we're going to overlap some of these trees as well. A bit of sap green mixing in with this darker green there, like that. Carry a bit over to that left hand side here. Um, be deliberate with those brush strokes. Just touch and go. Uh, touch and go. Uh, this tree here, we can do a little negative painting um, to just leave a bit of the trunk in. Bright yellow trunk in there. And we can put in some darker paint uh, through the bottom here as well. A bit of darker paint. Um, depends on what you want to achieve i love sap green it's just one of the most beautiful bright sort of colors that that um it's just a pain to mix up on your own i, I can never mix a vibrant enough green uh but obviously it's necessary this is a this is a highly saturated um palette that i'm using so everything is um definitely quite exaggerated the colors on there but you don't have to paint like this, guys. It's just a, a personal preference that I wanted to use these paints. I like to use the paints straight from uh, straight from the palette like that. Okay. So we bring that down there. This is all going to dry off and turn into something. And while it does, this is again an opportunity to drop in some darker shades like this to help. Um, create a sense of depth in what's going on. So darker, maybe some here, you know, a bit here, here. And let it 
let it blend in that that here there needs to be a bit more here there um good now of course we have missed out some of the trees and foliage and things up on top so some of that is certainly in order a bit there a bit there not everywhere but just in its places maybe here um here here um here bit here just very very light colors to indicate the leaves and things okay even here it actually is a bit darker up top of these um bits and pieces up the top left um, but again we don't have to get in all the detail in one go we can actually do that in a second quick wash okay can bring that trunk up a bit that okay um bit here bit here bit of green okay main thing is that i just want to preserve some more light over on that side and get in some uh, blues or purples or whatever so i'm going to pick up uh, my brush and uh, this is let's give this a crack i've got a number eight i've got a number eight flat brush and we can use that number eight flat brush to pick up some cooler color now if you've got some cerulean blue use that i'm going to use this lavender color because i've just been obsessed with obsessing about it but it may not work actually i think i'll be okay let's give that a try um that looks all right. I, I may actually mix this around a little with some cerulean blue to um, decrease that, that value. A bit more, a bit more cerulean actually. Here we go. Nice kind of granulating. Both of these colors are granulating, and we're gonna just drop them in like this, okay? Because we are in severe need of some cool colors there we go like that and uh new around scene a bit more here a bit here and uh allowing it to mix and weave into the leaves and the the, the uh trees like that then around here be careful yeah, 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 there, bit here, and um, really the goal for me is just to get in that indication of the sky and let it blend with everything else here on the page. Uh, we can leave some little white sections as well, so you notice I'm not painting everything in I'm just I'm leaving some whites and, and the reason I do that is so that they form a sharper edge on some parts and they identify the, the branches and trees a bit more really using a lot of this blue mm. down here right there Put a bit more in here, 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 bits in here. This is going to be less saturated on the left hand side. I don't want that to be too, I don't want there to be too much of that in there. Just a little bit of coolness. Okay. There, there. Okay. Great. So we're pretty much done with the first, first little wash. I'm going to give it a quick dry. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. With the second wash, uh, what we'll do is just put in a few little details. I'll finish this off pretty quickly.
All right, that's all dried off now. Here's for the fun bit. We're going to put in all the uh, darker sections and a second layer of detail. Um, also, just going to read some of the chats from my other page. We've got um, Leticia Norris from Romania. We've also got Lucia Lupu here again. Welcome, Lucia. Morning. Um, good to see you at, at, at again. We've got Angie Norheim, uh, Line of Wash. Okay, Line and Wash. Be neat to learn. Never heard of it. And new to watercolors. Want to make it for presents. Yeah, Line and Wash is uh, pretty cool because, uh, especially if you're starting out in watercolors, um, you always end up with something that's, that's passable. Um, when you're using just watercolors alone, sometimes it can just turn into a... Um, basically just turn into the same sort of uh, mess depending on, on you know, how much water and stuff you're using. But with the line wash, you're always going to get the uh, drawing showing through. So if you spend the time on the drawing and um, put in the effort, you're always going to get something that comes out. It's For some reason, the camera is uh, showing a bit too much contrast here in the, in the reds. There's actually a lot more detail in there. Um, yeah, but you know what? I'll just continue. We'll just continue on, guys. And there's also, let's have a look. There's a few more. Let me just open up, open up the chat and just have a quick look. Um, the apologies are that I have not, just can't seem to be able to open uh, the chat near the window. Oh, I think we've got a... Um, Hang on, give me a second. Um, where have we got? You bear with me, bear with me, guys. I'm just trying to open up the uh, the event, the second event, so I can view some of the other comments. Um, here we go, righto. Um, hey, we've got Kate Parbury here. Just wanted to to recognize a few people um, on the other chats. Kate Parbury from Geelong. Helen Leong, uh, back again from Toronto and Ontario. And, and Helen, I was really impressed with your your uh, painting the other day of that, I don't know what it was. It was it was like in Japan and it was like kind of a gate type of scene. A bit, I could say somewhat similar to this with trees coming up around the back, but you just, the, the amazing thing is that you managed to draw out that light by adding all the, the, the darks around your scene. It was quite beautiful. So... Um, good to see you again, Helen. We have got Angie um, as well. Angie, oh, I think I might have mentioned you already, Angie. Um, first time here, watercolor and I. Barn picture, like uh, like barn picture on the right, and wash. And we've got. I think that's it. I think I'm pretty much caught up. I think I'm pretty much caught up, guys. Um, Don saying, Don saying his is um his is turning out great. I think this one straight up your your alley Don you you have really um quite vibrant um vibrant sort of style um about a vibrant sort of style that I've seen in your in your scenes. So um I'm keen to see how it how it turns out. Uh, there's some granulation on this. It's hard to see. Uh, maybe if I bring it a bit closer, can you see that? The bit of the the pigments have granulated here and here, bit in there as well. Bit of this sort of bloomy kind of effect. Um, probably the camera is just a bit not focusing because I kind of set it to the just one focus. Um, but I love that effect. Uh, it looks much better in person. So I'll scan this later. Uh, for those of you who are unsure in terms of what's a granulating color and what's a color that's um, non-granulating. So generally granulating colors, um, they, the pigment dries, um, the pigment particles are large enough so that when it dries, they sort of clump together and they create texture. So I find that effect is really good for things like, yeah, I guess some areas of sky, some uh, areas where you want to imply texture like walls and wood, trees and things like that. So it dries and it just, you paint and it just dries in that sort of manner so that it looks like that. Um, it almost pops out of the page a little bit um, from the way I see it anyway. So it's interesting, interesting little effect. Um, there's a few questions as well. Um, yeah, and guys, if you've got questions, um, Pop them in the chats. I'm always happy to answer them. 
Bromley says, good morning. Just joined, slept in and watching. Very enjoyable as always. Awesome, Bromwyn. Good to see you. And um, and there's quite a few more viewers in these in, in this one today. Thank you for those. Thanks for those of you who have shared the event as well. Really appreciate it. Um, it does help me out significantly. Just get a few more viewers and uh, reach more people. Letitia is asking, what watercolors do you use? So I use a whole bunch of watercolors. I mean, actually on this palette here, I've got... Um, probably about four different brands, five different brands, Art Spectrum, Daniel Smith, uh, Holbein, and Schmincke. That's it. And also Magello. So five different five different brands. I just, sometimes I like colors from certain uh, brands, so I'll pick those. So Magello and Holbein have a lot of non-granulating colors. So if I want a nice, smooth, um, a nice, smooth, and crisp, clear sort of color. I tend to go for Holbein. If I'm looking for granulating colors, I tend to go for Daniel Smith. Um, they do some interesting uh, mineral colors as well. I'm having some. I'm getting some of those in the mail. Probably do a review of them when they come. Um, awesome. So uh, there's, there's a few other questions in the in the second chat. Um, Susan says, are granulated colors labeled in some way? Yes, they are. So you, you have to find out from the manufacturer themselves, but a lot of manufacturers, um, they provide a sheet, an online specifications sheet, which which actually tells you whether the color is granulating or not. They, they state it very clearly on the website. If you look up, um, you know, for example, uh, I don't know, ultramarine blue, Daniel Smith or something like that. You go to their website and it would actually and it will actually show you the light fastness rating, the granulation rating, and um, what else do they put on the series, the series of the paint. So the paint comes in different series. Normally, like manufacturers just um, have put like a new series one to four, and that with increasing series, it just becomes more expensive because the mineral or whatever they're using is harder to produce or harder to source. So. It's kind of how they 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 read it, but but um yeah um so most of the manufacturers do state it state it granulation uh, and uh, yeah guys if it, it, some comments you know people having issues uh, finding the references and stuff as well I do have that YouTube channel you can sub sub to that one and it will um, I've always got it in it's probably a little bit easier for some of you guys to find because I know that discussion section in the Facebook event it's a pain at times so awesome um. So let's let's continue on this one. I want to finish this one off really quickly and just bring together um, some additional areas to draw out some of the details. Now, some more. I'm going to bring in some more greens, some dark greens. Okay, and I've got neutral tint here. I mix that with some of the green, and um, we can do stuff like this. We can put in a bit there. Okay. bit of this stuff here we've got again another layer of detail another layer of color here and this will help to create a sense of depth just go in just just go in there and and, and um, drop that paint in and uh, remember the watercolors always will dry faster lighter um, than what you anticipate so while it might look a bit much at the moment be okay i've also got a little spray bottle if i find maybe look uh, it, it's too um too harsh or the edges are too strong give it a bit of a spray down and there we go we've just got this sort of thing happening now so um let's have a look some more a bit more green um running through here interesting thing is that we've also got some little red and orange parts for the um, leaves and stuff. It's going to be difficult to get them in now, given that um, given that some of these areas have pretty much dried off. But um, you know, you can pick up some paint straight from the uh, the tube or from the palette like that, and just get in some sections like this. A uh, bit of red. It's a bit overboard, but uh, something like that, like a clump of leaves, little ones here. Here we go. Looks like something. Some little leaves. Okay. When you're layering over other colors, it's kind of troublesome. You never know exactly how it's going to turn out, but it's certainly going to be a lot less uh, vibrant. 
um, than if you were to just add that color in first, cut around it. Um, but with if you've got like semi-opaque colors or opaque colors, um, or if you've got some gouache, it helps as well. And also I've got the, a very light wash behind here of that lavender. So I'm, I'm finding that it does help to, um, certainly does um, help because I can layer over the top of it with thicker paint and it doesn't get in the way. Um, fantastic. Let's put in a bit here underneath as well, a little bit here. I've kind of got a bit obsessed with doing this now, a little bit here. And this is, I'm doing this because we've got some greens in here and these greens are kind of, uh, you know, like a complementary color. So a little bit of green and the red overlapping with each other like that. I never, I didn't plan to do this initially, but I actually like that effect of how it's, how it's worked out on top. So I'm going to continue on, try to put in a few more through here. And, uh, you know, another thing is we've got branches and stuff as well, which we can further, further draw out. Um, this was meant to be a quick sketch and I'm, this has turned into something more now. It's uh, developed into something a bit more, um, a bit more work than I thought. A little bit of this, let's, let's join on some of this. Yeah, a bit of this, this, um, this color here, the, the branches, I, I just want to draw them out of the sky more. Yeah. So we've got some more detail. Yep. Um, there's also some uh, chats that I'm going to quickly uh, go through. Karen has jumped in here 10 minutes ago, came across this on Facebook tonight. It's a newbie here from Westfield, Indiana, new to watercolors as well. Um, Karen says, very interested in exploring watercolor mental, enjoying what I see so far. Thank you, Karen. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the, um, welcome to the show channel. Well, <laughs> whatever. I just, watercolor mental was just a name that I picked up. I, I kind of just made it up. I made this whole thing up during lockdown last year. And I, I didn't know what to kind of call myself. Um, and I just thought maybe you'd get some viewers if I just called it watercolor mentors, but it's turned into um, quite a, uh, a, a friendly and vibrant community. And I'm very thankful for, um, for everyone's support. And um, I'm also, you know, really glad that people have improved and learned a few things here and there. Um, Susan's asking, what is gouache? Gouache is essentially opaque watercolor. And you can grab a tube of it if you want to see essentially what it kind of looks like. Um, they usually come in larger tubes. These are some here uh, that I use. It's a brand that we have in Australia. 22.5 um, mils, opaque. So they kind of have a pastel-y sort of look to them, um, opaque. It's almost comparable to say, yeah, I guess acrylics to a, to a degree. So um, the thing with these colors is that you can layer over the top and create more contrast um, afterwards. Usually with watercolors, you can only put dark colors over light colors. Um, but if you're using gouache, you can certainly get a lot of different... Um, you can, yeah, you can get a, a lot of lighter colors over the top. I'll, I'll do a little demo of that afterwards. Um, I'll put, I'll try adding some of that in here just to highlight that point. Hope that answers your question, Susan. Uh, a few more questions. Um, Letitia Norris says, how do you stop yourself from overpainting? Sometimes I go too far and there's no going back. Um, I keep it to around two layers, Letitia. I don't, I don't layer more than two or perhaps three times. Third layer for just the uh, a little bit of darkness, the really dark sort of parts in there, because um, it's easy to to overwork things. So uh, try to think of ways to paint something with as a minimal amount of brush strokes. Um, that's what I kind of aim for a lot of the time. So I hope that kind of helps out. Um, you know, in these sections as well of the building, I mean, you've got these bits of darkness there, 
there i'm just trying to pick out some areas that i can highlight and draw out um you know underneath here this little rooftop as well uh, we can do this little kind of thing here um it's really just trying to uh, pick out some darker bits okay and outlining them okay so this is a tricky stage and it's a um can be a dangerous stage for some of you because it's um you know as this uh the teacher was saying it can be very easy to go overboard up with something overworked okay. um yeah they've even got some dark spots this is just i'm just using some neutral tint or you've got some panes gray you can do this as well a bit of darkness underneath some of these areas like this uh, simple little spots like that there uh, just to draw out some of the pillars and that kind of kind of jazz even on the edge here of the underneath the rooftops you'll notice there are some very dark areas that we emphasize. Um, dry off that brush and you can even get in a few additional marks here and there. Um, underneath some of these pillars as well, we've got a little bit of darkness, so a little bit of shadow like that. Um, and you get better as you keep practicing this, you get better at putting in those shadows and recognizing where they fall. So um, and, and the concentration of paint to use as well, because this can really um, make or break what's uh, what's going on. But the only way to really do this is to just practice, um, practice putting in those darks, and you're going to stuff it up. Like there's no no doubt that you're going to do this, and it's going to and and it's not going to look um, the way you want it to look a lot of the time. But that's the only way that you can um, understand and get that that experience with your brush, your brush marks, and yeah, the only way that I know how to do it anyway. So a bit of practical methods, practical steps like this. Um, I think that looks all right. I mean, there's probably extra darkness here on that left hand side a little bit here as well but i also don't want to get rid of all that beautiful red um so i think that looks okay um uh, i will you know later on i may do a bit more a bit more work in it later i can just i mean i can just keep on going for you know just just layering and layering um Letitia's saying um, watercolor is all about layers and patience. I'm so impatient. It's a hard medium for me. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm a very impatient person as well. And, um, and ironically, that's why I chose watercolors because you there's a sense of urgency with it. You Once that layer dries, that's it. It's over. So I find that um, uh, basically... I, I sit and I just try to complete a painting all in one sort of go. Um, whereas if you're doing something like acrylics or whatever, you've got a little time in the world. Bit of bit of this stuff, I'm just hitting the hitting the brush on the paper to get some little marks for the red, okay, to indicate these blossoms or. I mean, they're just imaginary blossoms, really. Um, bits of red running through. I think that looks all right. Um, this has kind of gone a bit haywire. Um, where's that tissue? Picked off a bit here. That there. Um, and. Um, yeah, we're, we're looks like we're just about we're almost done. You know, a few more contrasts running through on this side, a few more bits and pieces here, here, maybe here, around the sides of the and around the bottom and stuff here as well. Bits of layer, 
layering um, like that. Uh, maybe there's some green, some more green in here, and a bit more darkness as well, like here. Well, here, just draw that, add that in like that. Um, have a bit of wet on wet sort of work like that. Some more darkness running through here on that side. Um, that I'm just trying to emphasize this sense of light in the center bit. So we're almost pretty much done, everyone. Um, like it, everything I'm doing here is just fiddling around. I'm just, I can keep on going. But I'll never get started on that second one. And um, I know some of you probably need to sleep. So uh, let's have a look. There's a, there's a bunch, some more questions or comments. Carla Rackley says, Darren, I love you, but this one has shredded me. I will have to try later when I, uh, when I can go at a slower pace. It's a dumpster fire for me. <laughs> Uh, good, good night from Florida. Thanks. Um, you know, good on you for giving it a go. And um, it's not all in vain. Remember, it's not all in vain because the stuff that doesn't work out always teaches you something because it means you're doing something that you haven't um, tackled before and you pick up new techniques and you will always uh, build a little bit of confidence and a little bit of that, uh, th those skills uh, in your repertoire for next time. So, um, yeah, give it a crack again, probably at some stage, but, you know, good on you for um, giving it a try, you know. Uh, there are some other trees and things here in the background. I think, really, guys, I will end this, uh, not end this, but I'll, I'll finish this one off and, um, and start on that second one because uh, I, I really, I feel like I can just keep on going with this one. I'm, in, I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying myself uh, with the detailing of this, you know, and, and sometimes you just got to let it carry you, let that painting carry you through. Initially, I was thinking, hey, just a sketch, just a really quick sketch, but now it's turned into something that um, that's taking up a fair bit of time. So um, the last thing I'll show you was, I think it was, was it Carla? Uh, was it Carla who was asking about gouache? Susan. Um, Susan was asking a bit about gouache and how it works and that kind of thing. Now I'll uh, pick up a little bit of white gouache and I'll show you how I mix it around and get some lighter highlights. So I'll pause the video and I'm going to just uh, dry it off quickly. Alrighty, everyone, that's kind of dried off now. I've ended up with these larger clumps of darker areas, and here's a little trick, here's a little trick, and I'll show you how you can use some gouache, some white gouache here on the palette, which I've actually squeezed out prior. It's all dried up anyway, and I've mixed that along with some green, a little bit of sap green, um, if you can see here on my palette. And what we can do is just drag this across the page and get these little kind of marks like this, um, just like that, to mix up and um, change this kind of, uh, interrupt that pattern of, I guess, darkness in this section. And you can change it up as well. You can add some more green in there, for example, like this to make it more vibrant. Um, yeah, this kind of thing. I use a fan brush as well, which allows me to get in some... Um, interesting looking organic shapes i really like this bit of brush like that 
there. Um, it's just a kind of finishing touch. And, you know, for example, we've got this tree here. It just sticks out like nothing in the middle of nowhere. So uh, I'm just going to soften that bottom part of it a bit more like that. Add in some more of these little shrubs and things. And, and look how it just brings together the scene. Uh, you know, there's people who use watercolors, uh, only transparent watercolors. I, I tend to use mainly just transparent colors. And then with this stuff, a bit of the gouache I'll add in because it, it kind of brings, takes it to a, to the next level at times. And with watercolors, it's very hard to recover those initial light colors. Um, so this is about the only thing that you can, you can do. So that's about it. I think I'll, um, I'll finish this one off and, you know, bit of, let's put a bit of water, spray a bit of water through here to soften up some of that gouache as well. Um, let it sort of mix and mingle a bit. Okay, but we are, we pretty much done. So um, I'm going to grab the other sheet of paper and we'll give everyone a little break. I'll meet you back here in about five to ten minutes. I'm just going to get everything set up. Um, I'll be back.
Hello everybody, I am back and uh, looks like I'm all pretty much set up. Now I'm going to swap that reference photo out. I can't really see exactly the screen until I swap it in unfortunately. So um, the reference photo again, it's in the discussions uh, section of the Facebook event or you can go onto YouTube and it's on there in the community, uh, community tabs. Oh, what's happening? Everything's in the way. All right. Um, so uh, like in the like I said in the beginning of this live, I did promise that I would take your suggestions on what you'd like me to do this evening. Should I go with liner wash or should I go with watercolors? Um, I've had a, it looks like liner wash is sort of winning at the moment. I've had uh, f quite a few people say they wanted it, that one of that. So um, differences line and wash you will be able to practice your drawing skills it will have a more of a more of a structured sort of look uh, whereas if you go with a uh just watercolors it's going to be more um yeah less harsher sort of edges this is a really large bit of well, it's not large but in, in terms of the stuff i usually do live um i work one eight sheet this is a quarter sheet so it's uh it'll be a pretty fairly big line and wash sketch if we end up doing that largest I've ever done and I also would would like to acknowledge um, a few donations that I got so um, firstly uh, firstly with uh, Rena um, sorry I'm sort of moving around but Rena um, Rena Bell uh, thank you Rena for these stars also um, Anna Anna um, Lamadua um, sent 75 stars really appreciate it Anna um, and also Yves with 100 stars uh, appreciate Yves appreciate Yves you've been, been along for a long time you and Anna have been here for I don't know since nearly the start now so I really appreciate the support and I do have a bunch of courses as well if you check um, the description or you know watercolormentor.com slash courses I've got a bunch of courses there so if you guys um, want to if yeah if you guys want to support me and you know and, you know get something back for it as well a, a nice uh, bunch of videos videos um, that you can paint along to um, yeah have a check out those check out those courses I upload them fairly often I'm making a new one actually now on urban sketching so it's something I've really started to get into lately um, but yes uh, we'll, we'll continue going to continue on uh, looks like we've got Philip uh, Philip Stroll as well here on um, on YouTube and uh, thank you to Shinolan. Uh, she says she loves that color. Um, beautiful Magdalena, um, subscriber on YouTube, says beautiful colors. I love your loose style. Thank you, Magdalena. I've see seen you in some of my previous lives as well. So uh, appreciate the support. And I'm glad that you're enjoying it and, and sort of learning, um, learning from these lives. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm just checking to see if we've got any other any other chat Leticia says the vibe the, the vibrant red is pretty I'll bring up both the both the scenes later so you guys can have a have a look at um, them together side by side um, image appears blurry compared to the previous uh, oh do you mean the the scene here or do you mean the the reference picture James hopefully hopefully it looks okay for you um, but I haven't started drawing yet. Sometimes it, the camera struggles to focus a bit when there's nothing here. Um, let's have a look. We have, uh, I think that's about it. James says the the um, the image, the reference picture is a bit blurry. Hmm. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. If you if you go into the community, if you're in the communities tab, uh, what's it? Not communities. The um, discussions tab um yeah and you click on the reference yeah if you click on the reference photo it should enlarge it and it will come up with the full resolution um sized photograph um yeah it's important that you guys following along you have a copy of that reference uh, uh copy that reference there and uh james what i'll do i'll just copy you over the discussion section in facebook I'll paste it in the chats for you, um, so you can also access if you're having troubles um, finding it. Even your live. Oh, okay. 
Hmm, interesting. It might just be a streaming issue, James, in terms of uh, sometimes the, the video just buffers a bit funny. Um, check check the little, you know, in the bottom right-hand corner of YouTube, click that little bar that says settings and then change it to higher resolution. So 720, 720p, that might help. I think that's what you um, what might be going on. Um, it looks okay from my end, but sometimes, um, yeah, face these when I'm streaming, it will lag behind a little bit because I stream to two different places. So sometimes it's, uh, yeah, it it, it doesn't it, it sort of catching up. So yeah, try that little tip, James. That little cog in the bottom right hand corner of the video. See if you can increase the resolution. Chuck says, nice to catch up with you here. Uh, Darren got to go another online meeting to attend. Uh, thanks for the demo and uh, may you have a pleasant week and ahead. Uh, appreciate it, Chuck. Thank you for the kind message. Um, I hope it's not a I hope it's not a work meeting, Chuck, um, <laughs> because it's uh, that'll be a shame. Um, but I'll see you next time. Narada's here as well. Good to see you, Narada. And um, Narada's a regular, always um, very pr pr prolific. I think every week you've got something new that you've tried out um and good to see even between these little workshops you you have a bunch that you've put together different scenes that you tried um Mary says i like the french church though i like the french church scene hmm. um the french church scene was that the one that you uh uploaded the other day i know you sent a, a photo because i was asking people for suggestions on what i should paint and then you sent through a photo like of france i think you said france uh, I'm not sure if that was the one, but if you, yeah, if you've got any other suggestions, Nerida, send it through. Um, quite a few in there, and I, I'd like to hear what you guys want me to paint as well. It just challenges me too to get painting on stuff that I don't usually paint and draw. Um, okay, Shanolan says, it's always a pleasure to watch you. Thank you, Shanolan. And, um, I I can't thank you for, thank you enough for for your support and being being in these lives um, since the beginning. It's been uh, you know never really thought that I'd have many people watching in the first place. So um, it's really nice and um, yeah, sort of building my confidence as well because streaming, being able to stream and stuff like that. It's uh, it's been a uh, it's certainly you know been quite anxious about it when I first started off just being live and. Um, yeah, you, you know, doing everything live. One of the first few lives I did, the paintings I, I did were crap because I was just so nervous. <laughs> I'm getting a bit better now. And um, having all these nice comments from you guys really helps. So thank you so much. And also some more comments. Uh, Margaret McFadden says, enjoyed this one. Thanks, Darren. I'm still very messy. Um, I'm sticking with it. Just go with it, Margaret. And um, it is it, 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 bit by bit you improve um and the the like wet and wet one that you did of those trees last week i actually really like that because um you preserved a lot of those nice softer edges in the background for the trees and it may not look exactly like the reference but um you can always find something in a painting that you can say i did that well that was successful or this bit i could do a bit better next time don't be too hard on yourself enjoy the process and uh, Don, um, I'd like to acknowledge Don as well, uh, says, enjoying these Friday night um, sessions. Don sends 200 stars. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate your support, Don. Um, there's a few more. There's a chat from Lucia. It says, Has to have to go. Um, I'm really going to get cracking in a moment because, uh, you, you know, we've probably, um, you know, it's been streaming now for a couple of hours, and this next one, now I'm I'm probably gonna just gonna go line and wash, um, but let me know what you guys if you guys are happy for me to go with the line and wash for this second scene, or you want me to just go watercolors. I've had a few more suggestions for line and wash, so just let me know. And um, otherwise, I'm really just gonna get cracking with it, and um, it's probably really a bit easier for you guys to see line and wash anyway. And I'm kind of curious to see how I'm gonna do this because it's. It's just an enormous bit of paper, um, so this might take a, a bit longer than I uh, may anticipate. But uh... righto, um, line and wash. Karen says line and wash. Okay, um, I think that's it. 
I think I'm just going to go with that, guys. Otherwise, I'll be sitting here for all day. So uh, let's get that reference photo out. I'll bring that up on the screen for myself. And um, if you've got that on with you, make sure you've got that reference photo somewhere. If you've got an iPad or a phone or something like that, this is a tricky scene. There's a lot of things in here. It's kind of tricky for me to also explain exactly what I am drawing in, um, but I will do my best. This scene is quite a wide photograph and um, I'm going to see if I can squish it together a little bit. Um, it's kind of wide angle photograph. So um, yeah, we're going to give it a try. I think what we can also do is extend out the buildings higher and the, maybe put a bit more of a foreground in there as well. But I, I love how there's a very, very obvious sense of light here. And this is a scene of um, of Cairo. And, um, you know, I love the the, the sort of um, clothing styles and stuff like that of the people walking around as well. The kind of uh, head scarves and stuff as well. Bits of these like uh, material and things hanging over in the background, the buildings, it's, it's yeah, it's quite quite a uh, interesting looking scene. So let's uh, get started. I'm gonna actually begin with a 0.5 and a 0.8 liner, 0.5 and 0.8. So like I said, this scene, the, the, the reference photo is kind of more of a, where's it? Here it is. The the reference photo is is comes at a yeah like a look at a long sort of narrow view. So we're gonna have to extend that out a bit. Usually the paper that we're going with is gonna be a little more condensed. Um, and like I said, Yvonne says also line and wash, line and wash it is. Okay. Um. So let's put in the horizon lines. So point eight zero point eight liner. And um, we can't follow this photograph exactly because, it's, like I said, it's kind of like squished down. I'm missing the top and the bottom a little bit. So I'm going to just, we just have a guess. Let's put it about a third of the way up the page because I want to be, I want there to be like a nice element of, um, yeah, just a nice bit of foreground there. So drag that pen across quickly on the paper, something like this, just to mark out roughly where it is. Um, I'm also going to start putting in some elements of the, the buildings and things. So this building here, we know it kind of comes in like that, comes down here. Um, now the center of the page we have, I'm not even sure what this building is, but um, yeah, there's a dome here. And, if, and it's about halfway through the page. Okay, halfway through the, the reference photo, kind of through the first little bit here. I don't know, it's really hard to describe what I'm even drawing. But one, let's just mark a little section here, the, the middle point of the horizon line, okay? And that can be roughly where we've got this dome-like structure. It looks like there's four domes here also underneath, which are catching the light, semi-circular objects. It doesn't matter. I, I'm just looking at them as shapes. And to the left of these domes, we have this kind of wall uh, building. I don't know what it is. It kind of runs up like this there. Let's put it in very lightly. Um, a lot of this stuff we can just um, improvise and get in uh, along the way. Now, another thing to keep in mind is just for this stage, go pretty light, okay? Because um, we're just kind of drafting at the moment, drafting where the shapes are going to be in their rough positions, okay? That's the side of that building. See, that's too much. I've gone too high for there, so I've just reduced that down a bit like this. Background, there is another building here. Um, I'm not sure what this is, but there is a kind of a couple of objects up the top like that. And, um, you know, I can just, let's, I, I'll just emphasize that edge there like that. And it comes down, you know, that can be a edge of a building. Uh, something like that. Um, we've got windows here. We've got a window here. You know, we've got a window here, for example. And, um, what else do we have? We've also got um, this side of the building, which actually is uh, facing the viewer like that. Halfway, around about halfway through, we have a kind of rooftop like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just emphasize a bit of that rooftop, kind of like that. Okay, and it kind of comes down. Look at this. There's a square there for the window. Okay, just a window like that. Um, we have got 
a pillar running down the side there. Here we go. I'm getting I'm getting um carried away and getting in too many details, but um, we're gonna have to do this stuff anyway at some point. There we go. That's another part of that building to that right. Look how loose I'm drawing as well. Yeah, we just again it's still just references, uh, general references of where things are, um, rather than trying to get in all the detail in the first place. Uh, the longer you spend on the drawing, uh, the better the, the, the details just tend to stick out. So it really depends on your style. I mean, um, I find, um, you know, Yves, you're watching along as well. Yves's uh, drawings, Yves is one of the uh, one of our um, members who's been watching for quite some time. Yves has got really, really detailed lines and um, it, the, the, the stuff that comes out on the other end is, is, is amazing. I'm sure he spent a heap of time on it as well. Um, it really just depends on your on your style and what you want to achieve. Don't feel like just because I'm doing things quickly, you gotta, you know, you gotta um, get on with it and and and, uh, and uh, hurry yourself through it. Um, I I challenge. I use that. I sort of challenge myself to um, do things a little bit faster because certainly um, I used to take way too long in my paintings to get through bits and pieces. These are windows here. Now they're not exactly what we see in the reference. I mean, they're not um, perfectly uh, spread out or what have you, but I do, um, you know, I've actually made a mistake. I've not left enough room there, but it doesn't matter. You can still put that in. Even the, the, the windows are shaped a little bit differently. Um, they've got sections kind of running down the page, they're kind of like um, vertical, you can see that, just little vertical segments that just run down the page here. I'm going to go darker, but by the way, this one, uh, a little bit darker in some of these windows. Um, let's have a look, maybe a section here, there, there, oops, this should kind of come up a bit like that, there. This can be another window there, there. Okay, bit of that window. Another one here, there. Just a bit of detail in those windows. Okay, like that. That looking kind of like something already. Um, outline that window better. Like that. Um. Now that we've got some of these guiding lines in here, it makes it a lot easier, right, to draw some of these shapes because we kind of know their rough locations. So, uh, yeah, like if if you, you know, I used to do this in pencil, but now I just do it in pen. So it's kind of like practicing. It's like putting in the rough location of that line before you completely commit to that line. Um, you know, the bricks on the walls as well, you find they have like, a, you know, there's a lot of bricks running through here. They're very neatly designed kind of bricks, um, which you can put in there or not. I'm just going to leave it for now. Perhaps I'll do them later. I'll show you guys how to get that in. But this is going to, I think this is going to take a little while to, to actually draw in all this stuff. But um, I love um, drawing in pen. Normally, I don't actually like drawing in pencil. Something I'm I'm trying to get into a bit more and practice more because uh, I think with pencil you can get in more tones and stuff just easier. So a bit of that going in there. I'm going to outline that window here, here. Um, it's really just stuff on that left hand side. Again, we've got a window here, right? And uh, it looks to be some kind of barricade or or whatever there now. Just because it's there doesn't mean we necessarily have to put it in. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll, I'm, I'm thinking I might actually have a figure here. Let's put in the head of the figure, roughly where we want that figure to be. This guy with the walking stick there, kind of just coming towards the scene. Let's I'll put the body in first, kind of like this. Okay, he's going to walk in here. Um, one leg here in front that the other leg here kind of um 
bit of a foot like this. Okay, there's a, there's a fella sort of walking towards the front of the scene. He's got these kind of long sleeved uh, shirt that's rolled up and um, arm coming out like this. There we've got another arm that's kind of just facing outwards and then we've got the walking stick here. Something like that. And um, with the light coming in, it's all, remember, it's all coming in light sources from that right-hand side. So a bit of that here. Um, we have a figure here, a female figure. Um, it's just kind of just coming in from the scene fairly, you know, a fair bit forward. So put a ponytail. Let's, I'm just going to, you know, get that little section there like that. And then I'm going to get her arm in, which sort of part of the shoulder there, there. She's kind of looking at a phone or something. Holding onto a phone. There we go. Um, holding onto a phone. People can't walk anywhere without looking at their phones these days, including, including myself at times. Uh, yeah. And. There we go. We got a bit of that coming in, and then we let's get in the part of her dress or something like that. Um, now, because we've got more foreground, um, we've got more foreground. I am able to put in more of her legs. So here's one, one leg coming forwards, there, one leg and perhaps moving backwards like this. Okay, but it, this one kind of, you know, I'll get this one to disappear out of the scene a little, just like that. Okay, and uh, maybe she has got a bag or something. Let's, I'll put a bag here, sort of coming over to the side here, like that. Um, oh, that shoulder on the left a bit, it's okay. But there you go, she's kind of walking um, into the scene foot facing forwards like that. Um, this other leg comes out of the scene. Uh, here we got the, you know, this window, which I'll just scratch in quickly behind the figures. Okay. I'm also using um, the same pen for all this. It, best practice actually is probably to use a thinner pen for the stuff in the background. So then um, it pushes it back a bit further. Um, but you can get away. You certainly can get away with it just doing what I'm doing as well. Um, let's put in some of the windows. And, and remember, the reference is just, you're just using it as a reference. You don't have to um, copy exactly whatever's in there. So um, sometimes, especially in a, in a pen and wash sort of situation like this, where you want to uh, simplify details, you're going to be here forever if you... Look at that. look at the intricacy. Look at the intricacy of what's going on here. On the top of the windows, there's these little the arch, and there's another arch on top, and then there's a line, and then there's all this stuff. So much there's really so much going in here, um, and you know potentially this might be part of the the architectural details of of these buildings in, in Cairo, and and you might want to imply the uh, emphasize the lo locality, the location of what you're what you're doing more. In that case. Pick out those things like that, that um, unique to a particular region, like the maybe the window frames and stuff. So um, I'm just not going to do it because I know I'll be here for way too long. I do. You know, a bit of hatching there, you know, here on this side. I'm going to reduce this down and bring this further down like this, kind of like the edge of this building. And I know it sticks out of the sky kind of like this. So let's... Yeah, something like that there. And then we've got another section here, again, that comes out and comes down like that. Um, on this side, another part that comes down, sticks out, comes down to the ground around about here. Um, there, it actually finishes it around about here, to be honest. And we've got another one here, um, this sort of, I don't know what it is, but this shape kind of has these couple of dome like objects up the top there. Has anyone ever been has anyone ever been to, to Cairo or been to Egypt by the way? And uh, let me know if you've been here, 
and um and, and if you know a bit of the history behind some of these buildings and things because i i really have no idea what i'm what i'm drawing in some of these these domes and stuff like that so we'd love to love to hear from you uh, so there we go the side of this building i've just simplified that down yeah kind of goes down there like that um these buildings here we can start getting in a bit more detail now there are these little shades um these shade cloths uh, you can see them they're kind of like this shape again these uh yeah, whatever you, the uh, trapezoidal shapes and they're really just slithers of light running across some of these areas and they will help to guide um, add some uh, detail and light indication of light that sort of thing there's things here there's a couple of figures also I'm kind of walking around in this uh, area of the scene which I'll just um, quickly indicate like this okay a couple of a um, couple of figures there looks like this one's kind of holding a bag this one is um, just walking along next to her together and um, there we go just like this interesting looking figure a bit of the feet at the bottom as well there there we go just something like that um there we've also got so many figures here in the background that we can um draw in emphasize you know if you've got a 0.5 liner as well switch to switch to that if you want to look at that look slightly alter that that edge so that it kind of looks more like a softer line and um, pushes that figure back more because really a lot of these figures just overlap and disappear off into the distance um so having some overlapping shapes like this really makes a difference to create that sense of uh, dimensionality. Ellen says, uh, Ellen Whitney says she's been to Cairo, um, but I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll probably bring up uh, Wikipedia or something later and uh, and take a look. Um, oh, good. Um, let me know who's who's still watching. Who is who is uh, who's 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 uh, watching and um, and where you're up to in terms of the drawing? Am I going at a decent enough pace for you all to keep up? Um, I'm just having some fun here drawing these these figures. And another thing you can practice: try drawing the figures without lifting your pen off the page. So, for example, look what I'm doing here. Here's a couple. You know, here's maybe another figure here. Just draw a few without lifting the pen off the page and see if you can uh, get in a, a real basic shape of, of some figures. And this could be someone in the shop, shop here. Um, here on this side, we might have another figure, for example, just kind of walking in into the scene or maybe standing sideways, for instance, like that. Um, yeah, that's worked out okay. Just sort of sideways arm here. There, maybe he's got an arm in the front looking at his phone or something or having a drink there. Um, great. And, um, you know, we've got all this stuff going on here. Let's start getting in a bit of the background. Uh, this building, this smaller building directly above um, these two figures here. So um, there's actually a bit of greenery here looks like a, a bit of a, a tree or something there as well that i'll draw in some rectangular shapes could be the storefront or something like that uh, there but um i'm going to carry this down yeah now the one thing we got to be careful about is now looking at this dome here in the background how exactly we're going to do this kind of halfway up the building now, i might i might place it here Ooh, place it here midway through the page i think this will give it enough room little indication of that dome i'm making it a little larger than it actually is as well um i don't know why but i just thought it'd be i can emphasize it a teeny bit more there's a lot of stuff going on in here really there's so much stuff in here that i'm just gonna we can just reduce a lot of this down 
later on. Watercolors. Uh, there we go. Which, which like that. If you've got a thinner pen for this um, stuff in the back, use that thinner pen. Or just go lighter, press lighter with your pen so then it doesn't stick out all too much. Okay, there we've got a section underneath a couple of these sort of openings like that. Two, two, four, six. Okay, six of them separated out to sections like that. And um, what else do we have underneath? This kind of um, comes out actually a bit more like to the side there. There, bring that down there. Um, awesome. Um, okay, Yvonne says, uh, I'm still here but running out of steam. It's almost 10 p.m. here, and my early mornings make this my bedtime. Yes. <laughs> yeah, if you need to leave, Yvonne, um, I totally understand you. You're, you're up like at 5 a.m. in the mornings. you um, got a busy life. So uh, these, will, these will be up later, so don't worry. Um, but good to have you. Good to have you along, Yvonne. And if you got while you're here and you've got questions and things um, that I can help and support you out, uh, support you more, um, just let me know. Um, Yvonne's one of my patrons on, on Patreon. Um, and I've been watching along for quite some time. Uh, Bronwyn's, Bronwyn's still watching. Awesome. Good to see. I think, I think by this point, um, you know, it's very normal to run out of steam. Um, I've just kind of trained myself, I guess, to continue along with things, but um, it's also sometimes I just get into it and I can um, sort of uh, carry on. But uh, these four things here, these four uh, little, I don't know what they are. They're kind of miniature domes like that, right? Putting them in. And the ground is... Roughly here. I think we've left enough room. Probably a little bit too much. And if they're a horizon line, maybe shift the horizon line a little bit further up. Uh, but now we've got that central point here. Uh, what I can do is start putting in, um, you know, more of this stuff front. Yeah, there's another building here. There's a section here that's just like a larger building, and that comes down. It's like a Know, what is it a, a rectangular shaped building carries all the way across here um, like that comes down like this here um, you know this section of this building kind of carries along and joins up so it's really quite crucial to make sure that you have a sense of continuity in these uh, shapes so that we don't just have one big shape uh, so we don't have just an isolated shape but it kind of all you know what I mean? This all joins up. Even the figures, they overlap and they join up and they do things here. Uh, you know, there's this. I wasn't sure whether to put in that fence or whatever that barricade there earlier, but I'll just put it in like that again because this helps to join parts of the scene up. Um, who knows? I may actually change that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Um, now there is a fence here, and um, I really don't know what this thing is here for but uh thinking whether i want to actually put in that fence or not this is going to be a pain to draw it in guys it's going to be a real pain so i think i'm just going to exclude that fence i'm just going to pretend it's not there and i'll have to make up some of this stuff here for the buildings um but you know it's kind of it's kind of like a it looks like a marketplace a market store sort of situation here's a bit of the a kind of a, the back of that shade someone there set it set up a store and there's a bit of darkness here underneath so hatch that away a bit of hatching there um the little bits and pieces on the ground um you know i don't know what this is another square or something but um figures just walking off in the distance just sort of watching getting in the way of things as a person standing here um 
foot forwards, one foot forward, and one foot to the back. You know, I'm just looking at shapes. I know there's stuff underneath here, but I can't really see it. But we know that there are some shapes and squares. There's a person here standing at some kind of behind some kind of um, and this, I don't know what it is, some type of makeshift table there. There's another person standing here, um, just looking over what's happening. Uh, there's another person here, maybe in mid walk like this. Um, over on that right hand side, these people look way too tall. These two people here, yeah, but I'll, I'll uh, redo them in a moment. You know, underneath as well, we've got some of these dark sections here. I don't really know what they are, but um, you know, a bit of darkness there. And at the bottom of the buildings, I don't know, maybe I'll put in just some a line there to signify where it sort of stops. Um, okay. Um, Apparently, it's the um, Khan, Khan El Kahili Market. Could be. Could be. So, um, it's a cool place. I mean, it just looks like a really um, bustling sort of scene. And I think for watercolors, it's good as well because we've got really strong elements of light and dark and also cool and warm. The buildings all have this sort of sandy sort of color to them um, let's go ahead and start putting in this uh, tower here on that right hand side and it goes up like this and um, finishes off like here it's two segments the top one finishes around about here then we've got a middle section these three little bits empty sort of sections there which show through the sky um, something like this and then we've got how can we simplify this down it's kind of like triangular isn't it and a triangular sort of shape so something like that that there we go that's a bit of what do we have going on there i'm going to just also get in the top of this dome a bit more um indicate that more as well um fantastic so continuing on um now remembering all this stuff a lot of that's going to just be dark anyway so don't worry if it's uh we're missing details. We certainly are. We're certainly missing details in here, but it's not the end of the world. Um, there we go. There's another building. There's a, another kind of building also here um, to that right hand side. That, and it comes all the way down in the distance. Now, I'm just trying to put in the general silhouettes of these buildings, and then later I'm actually going to put in more details, kind of similar to what I did there. That side, um, okay, we got this building goes all the way up, almost hits the top of the page, um, because we need to balance out that side as well. This kind of comes out like that, and uh, looking at the pen, where's my point? Is that the point five? Oh, this is the point five, no need to worry. There, run down, this kind of runs all the way down, it's a large building. Look at that, look at the look at the windows of these of this building. Never seen something like this before. There's, I wonder what they're for. Um, the, the, uh, or if it even is, uh, I don't know, and the purpose of that building is, uh, is yeah, there's kind of just shapes running through it. I don't know, like these five lines, five vertical lines that run through. See this, this sort of two squares, five vertical lines, you know. There we go. Sort of box with a shape like that. And um cool thing here is that we've also got the like a car uh here as well, like a van, which I'll put in around about here. Let's take a bit more time to do this now. I'm getting a bit lazy at this stage because I've been sort of drawing for a bit, but let's 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 sort of focus a little bit and get some of this back end of that window in, like that. Okay, now we're gonna go down roughly to here okay it's all just to the back of the, this van still like that there we go um bottom of the van there a bit more detail for the window um maybe some of this like section of the car like that the tail lights a bit of this uh number plate you know there some hatching as well here to sort of just darken more 
I'm going to bring this all the way across, like here. The wheel kind of starts around here. Let me just try to draw it in, the basic shape of that wheel. And then we've got a wheel that's kind of underneath here, like that. So there we go. Connect that up. We've got that wheel there um, touching the ground. And then we're going to bring this across the windows. They line up with each other in terms of the height. So we're going to carry that on. We've got a person walking in front of the car, like here. Let me just put in some this person quickly, like that. Um, there we go. Some arms and maybe there's some legs here. Kind of walking into the scene. I'll probably have to make this guy a bit bigger, actually, because see this one here, I've drawn bigger. So I'm going to have to get this one bigger. So it's kind of looks a bit bit um fiddly right now, but I'll when we go in with the watercolors it will um better. Um now the front of the, the vehicle uh, it's missing. And so I'm gonna have to kind of um make it up. I have to just make it up. So I'm gonna guess this, the first wheel is like here. Front of the car extends out and then like that. Something like that. And okay, maybe we have another window here. Well, a bit of etching where we got, we got sort of like a segment here with a van, sort of got the, the door or whatever, the, the van there, there, more hatching and coloring in some of these sections that helps to bring out that figure as well. There we go. We got a, got a van there, and the wheels like this, um, two, and remember the shadows we can get in later. But I'm quite happy with that van, actually. It looks nice. Um, it's going to form a, a solid shadow across the ground. Um, same with this figure, too. What I don't have is a figure, uh, like a larger figure walking in. I think I'll um, get one here, similar to that figure um, on that left-hand side. And uh, hmm, might... Uh, some hair on this one. And it could be like a sleeves here. Just, you know, there's an arm kind of walking, maybe he's walking towards us, like this there. The uh, forearms and then the hands. Oops, this is kind of will need to be there. Thumb uh, there. And uh, let's Put in a bit of that, the bottom of the shirt and um, some, this leg here in the front, um, here, so that, another one here, closer by, um, really I should have put this figure up a little bit higher, but uh, you know what, look, it's not, no biggie, no biggie, we'll just continue on. Uh, maybe a figure behind there as well. And just sort of maybe standing there, lurking behind the car. Um, and these overlapping shapes. Now, I, I do feel we're missing something here, a bit of like a person maybe sitting around, and but maybe we can get some more of these market store indications, like kind of, you know, things there. This area here is just, it's lacking some detail. I need to put some figures in here or something to um, uh, just create more contrast in this section. And uh, the shadow, create some shadows as well. So we're going to overlap some figures like that. Um, we might just draw this down a bit more. There could be a couple of legs there, legs here, these two figures. Here, um, let's have a look, a bag or something there, bag here, um, there we go, a bit there, I'm also now feeling we should have another one here to the left, it's, don't worry if you don't overlap things with each other, um, I haven't exactly planned this out, so um, it's better if you don't, um, I find it's a little bit better if you don't, but uh, yeah, sometimes it can't really be helped. Um, Okay, here's another figure here in front. I'll just simplify that down. It could be a smaller figure. 
Okay, this one is too, probably a little too tall. Um, these two as well on the side. Uh, I can reduce the head a little to help. Okay, looks a bit better. It's not too obvious. Not too obvious. Um, this can just be form a shadow running across there. Uh, righto. How about this? These buildings now. Jeez. That's so much again going on on this right hand side. There are some, I don't know, like a building here. It's got a funny roof, triangle, triangle, and then it just comes down. And uh, another rectangle. And uh, it comes down like that. And we've got another bit that sticks out to the right hand side for this building. That comes down too. That comes down here. And we've got uh, another rooftop that just sticks out like this up the sky, comes down. There, got a couple of uh, these dome uh, arch shaped windows running on that right hand side. Uh, I'm just going to get the top of this car in more um, neatly. Okay. Great. And we've got really a lot of stuff in here to work with. I think this is going to work out quite okay. Um, like I'll, I'll leave the figures and stuff. I mean, I was really, I was really tempted perhaps to put another one running through, but uh, the sense of light in this will be pretty strong because all this area is going to be pretty light here on the ground. Um, like I said, there's all these, you know, the buildings have all these features in them. Once you've done the big shapes, once you've done the big shapes, uh, the little shapes become easier to, to add in. Kind of like you know where the little shapes fit in in relation to the big shapes. And this is that weird, you know, here, the, this building's actually way too tall. Um, and that's okay. And because of the, the paper, again, like the, compared to the photograph and the paper, um, I'm going to have just sort of had to elongate everything. One, two, three, four, five. See, what is this? I wonder what that is. Um, is it just a decorative thing? Just look like, like again. I'm just looking at them as shapes. Maybe the the most the biggest tip I have for anyone when you're drawing is uh, try not to look at things as like a, that's a building or that's a car. Just train your mind to reduce them down to basic building blocks like Lego. Um, and that will make it so much easier for you to draw. It took me a while to figure that out. And, um, you know, it's also less intimidating because you're then, um, instead of drawing a car, you're drawing a box. And if you can draw a box or a car. So one of my little tips, these five things here, look at that. Pretty cool. I think it's just perhaps the design of the building. I don't know. Um, more kind of these windows here on the side. This, I think the windows there. Some more of these vertical bits and pieces like that. We can really go on forever, everyone. Um, like I, I'm, I, I want to just rush, hurry this up a little so I don't uh, spend too much time on it. Um, this is the little marker I've got. That little darker sort of uh, marker, and I'm going to use this to create some darkness already in this section um bits and pieces around the figures especially two in this area maybe some darkness in here um i'm just kind of winging it and trying to find some areas of darkness that i can use to cut around um some of these figures and things even here you know we've got you know a bit of darkness in the in the roof of the, uh, not the roof, but you know what I mean, the uh, top of the windows, like that draws a kind of border, a boundary between them there. Um, bit of that. What else do we, what else can we do? We've, I went, let's get some more darks in here. Okay. Um, and you can do this with watercolors as well. So don't feel you need to do this all now. It's just a personal choice I'm, I'm sticking with at the moment. Um, because I'm getting a bit tired also of drawing with just that pen. I want 
I want something new in here. I just want some more, a bit more, a bit more darkness and stuff going on. There's even, you know, over here there are these little, um, looks like kind of shirts and stuff that are just hanging. So I'll, I'll put that up. Um, we can indicate some of that fence. I didn't really want to draw it in though because it's too. There's so much of it, and I feel that it will also obscure um, the buildings too much if we're not careful, but um, you can do this sort of thing. <coughs> do this sort of thing. Ah. Fantastic. Uh... Nolan said, has anyone said doing the line and wash is like doing a coloring book? Exactly. It, it, that's what it feels like. It's as if you're making your own coloring books. And, um, and uh, the, the best thing is that they're personalized. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're going, you know, a lot of these may be based on trips that you've gone on or maybe just photographs that you've, that you like, that you personally enjoy. And it, it, it does, um, yeah, it gives that personal touch rather than kind of going out there and you know, there are a lot of these adult coloring books and stuff out there, which uh, some people like, but um, if you're into making your own, this is like a great way of doing it. So I should have done these bits in this pen actually here. It's easier. Look how easy that is. I mean, I feel like that. This is like a quick, look at that, it's just a hack. One, two, three, four, five. I've almost forgotten that I got this set of pens, so. There's not these lines on there, but I'm going to draw them on because they will help indicate the dimensionality of this building. Um, I give it a more three-dimensional view. Feel. So they're not really there, but I'm just going to put them on anyway. Most importantly is that we need to form this boundary of where the car is. That needs to be very apparent. I don't want to lose that boundary. Um, and the white of that car as well. Um, oh, it's not completely white. It's going to have neutral tint and stuff in there as well. But, um, you know, darkness around the edges of the wheels like this. And this using this pen really forces you to be loose because you can't get a whole lot of detail in with this pen. It's just kind of just darkness, really. Um, We've also got, for example, this person there, the legs, we can join the legs up, make it look like they've got darker sort of feet. Um, I need a bigger, the three millimeter one's gonna help, three millimeter pen. Um, yeah, this three millimeter pen. I wanna darken off this person's um, legs as well. Add. Okay, something like this, join them on together. There, okay. There, we can put in a bit of a shadow or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe some here, this person here in the background, the leg coming up here, down here. Okay, do that, do that sort of deal. Um, what else can we do? Maybe a bit here for this person. Little darkness on that figure. Okay. This one here. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at being careful that I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do everything in the pen. So we have some stuff that's uh, later on we can get in with uh, the line and wash. What's this? I'm not even sure what I'm trying to do here. I think this is meant to be a backpack. It's holding on to a backpack. I've forgotten what I was drawing sleeves and stuff so you can just outline a bit more detail there bottom of the chin there and maybe a nose um eyes like this um and a mouth yeah um very basic very basic shadow for the face running to the left okay um yeah i mean it's we're almost we're almost, we're almost like done. I'm just having, I'm just actually enjoying this drawing. So, um, normally I'll, I'd, I'd hurry this up a bit, but 
this is kind of fun doing the the windows and stuff like that there's some here you know this the windows of these buildings look at that it's just a this is like a kind of this pen is great mm, just saves me so much time and they look like uh, shapes of these windows just look like and the doors look like the but they should with only a few little strokes like that there we go there we go just gonna color this one down too um this forms the boundary of that car as well being so careful not to eliminate the boundary where this car starts um even here as well okay what else do we have yeah we're just really picking out some shapes here and there aren't we um you know some more here you know here there's also some windows here and here but, uh, quick little sporadic touches on the paper um like that and what do we have here we've we need some more roughness running through this uh, section of the dome or whatever we have here because and we just need some more darkness. We need some darks running through like that. And, um, you know, underneath as well, we've got some little shapes and stuff. Um, you know, I'm missing a bit of stuff. Underneath. I don't really know what runs through that building. I do think it's quite dark. I do think it's quite dark, though. Maybe some texture in the building might be okay, like that. But I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave most of it for the watercolors. Um some here you know look there, a bit there a bit there it's there a bit here these windows are probably like darken a little bit as well some of them anyway like that i'm missing a little bit of darkness in those windows that just so quick using this pen there we go um these windows as well why not? Let's just darken this window as well. It's got a frame to it, like that. Um, perhaps some um, darkness in there too. I've just put a bit of, actually here in the, the kind of leg, sideward leg stance of this person, like that. Nice. Um, maybe a bit here for this figure too. Okay. Um, I think we're pretty much, I don't know, I think we're, we're pretty much done with the sketch. I, I'm, um, dare say I'm getting a bit, getting a bit of draw, a bit tired of drawing this now. Um, trying to pick out all these details and stuff like that. But I think, I think we've got a decent enough drawing. Um, <laughs> that really depends on your, the definition of decent. But there's enough in here to uh, proceed because we've got such a I've got such a large sheet of paper. I find like I'm I'm always trying to find ways to add more things in, join up some shapes here and there because um it's just it's just the nature of having working with larger bits of paper. There's just more to add in here, especially this stuff here in the foreground. I think like def definitely the shadows are are gonna help significantly. Righto. Um, I might just put in a this couple of like a couple of these little windows here. But apart from that, I keep saying I'll just do this. I'll just do that. And sooner, five hours later, we're still drawing. Um, I always find something that I can. I just always find something that I can continue to work on. Um, distracted here. I always get I'm bored of working in this area, and I swap over and I go to this area, and then I sort of backwards and back and forth um, until something kind of emerges out of this, right? And I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but I, in my mind, I've got a basic idea of like the figures, and 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 I work it out along the way too, like. You don't have to have everything planned from the start. I, I think that's a that's a mistake to have the entire scene planned out in your mind because you 
um, at times you you have to let the scene just sort of carry you the art sort of uh, whatever happens just dictate what happens um, you make a mistake or something you like how something looks it might look better and it might work better than how you'd initially anticipated so I'm really liking using this pen I didn't anticipate to use this much of um, this much of the pen right um, but I'm kind of happy that I did because it's given it a sort of interesting a new dimension a, a different different sort of look normally you guys know I, I use just one or two pens that's it I don't really fiddle around with too many other pens let me just get in some of this window and we uh more more that more of an inch and then Uh, stuff that's again in the front we can draw out darker this is going to make it come forwards more that definitely don't regret that um i know i could put another window in there i feel like there should be something here just a smaller one that okay let's not let's not overdo that Okay, um, I think we're pretty much done. Um, let me check the chats. Let me check the chats. Um, Yvonne says, Darren has a series called Urban Essentials, make your own coloring books. <clears throat> yeah, so, um, yeah, if you guys want to support me, I have, I have Patreon. It helps me to uh, turn this situation into a, a reality um where i can um yeah i can just do my art more hopefully as a, a long-term thing um you know it's my actual job one day and um I'm, I'm really i'm really being quite quite um happy um to have um yeah the the patrons that i have at the moment and um v uh, i'm not sure where v is but v is normally here and um she's um one of my one of my students who do sort of like one-on-one -on -one going to be doing some one-on-one -on -one lessons soon um but all the stuff on patreon i've got about I've got tons of courses on there that you can check out um i've also yeah on the website you can sort of like buy them individually as well um and uh, there's a lot of value in there I, I find a lot of the courses out there they may have like one or two scenes that you um, paint along to and that's the whole course but i actually some of these courses i put on quite a lot i put on maybe some of them maybe up to 15 different paintings sketches and stuff and um sketching exercises and things that you can try and play paint along to um so we'd appreciate your support if you if you end up um, liking my stuff or you're learning um from these um learning um you know from these workshops and you're enjoying um i'd be honored if you if, if you'd signed up um but you know happy to have you all here in um and i appreciate your time Chanolin says, my other problem is I can't put a lot of people in there. I have a problem with doing that. Um, can't put a lot of people in there. Uh, do, you, do you mean you're struggling to know where to place the people or, or, or um, you're not sure how to draw the people in a kind of large sort of uh, clumps and stuff like that running through the scene? Um, it takes time. It certainly takes time to know exactly where to place them so that it doesn't look too much um you know like for the ones in the background you see they're just very small details and then there's a few here i i had to put some in here because without these there's just all this empty space here and nothing going on so super important for me to have some of those there um and then obviously the ones in the background show this decreasing size which creates a sense of um uh, a sense of depth in the scene so um, certainly would recommend that uh, as, a, as a first tip to Nolan um, and Ellen's asking me Ellen's asking me what is the other job it's pretty boring Ellen um, work with it's like data analysis stuff so uh, I don't want to put you guys to sleep but um, so yeah, people it's, it's often quite funny because you know people don't expect me to be um, like an artist and stuff like that because 
you know, it's always, you know, it's often thought that, you know, art and science and uh, numbers and stuff like that is it's quite separate. Um, I've got a lot of friends that actually work in that field of, of work, um, you know, engineering and stuff like that. And um, yeah, they, they can be quite artsy as well. Um, but yeah, of, often I think people are surprised. Often people are quite surprised. And Ellen says, um, Ellen says, you own, I own a custom software company. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, are you a, I think you mentioned, you mentioned to me before you were like an engineer, Ellen, you a uh, software engineer or something, something like that. Um, yeah, I could, um, uh, could do with some of your, your advice on, on, um, web design and stuff like that as well. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm learning how to do all this stuff, um, online. So, um, yeah, like I, I I use a website that kind of converts reference photos into um, line drawings and stuff as well. Ellen's uh, she's okay. You just you do accounting, um, accounting and marketing. Awesome. Programming's like I, I feel like it, it, some people are just good at it naturally. Um, it clicks better for them, or they've picked it up when they were really young, and so it's. Um, accumulated knowledge and stuff like that. I've tried, I've tried like to learn bits and pieces, HTML, um, yeah, a bit of like web design and stuff like that. But it's, I, I think like now with WordPress, you kind of do it sort of drag and drop sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Do you, um, I guess you do art to, to sort of get yourself out, to get those creative sort of juices flowing and, um, yeah, uh, for me, like looking at numbers all day does my head in. So I need to have a way of expressing myself, a way of creating. Because often nowadays in a lot of corporate jobs, you, you find that there is less, I, I don't know, it's probably always been like this, but there's um, lesser and lesser sort of um, opportunity for, for for creativity and for expression of your of your individual thoughts and stuff a lot of companies will want you to um want, want you to to adapt to what they're thinking and their culture and stuff like that um, which is fair enough obviously if you're working for another company but um i think art is a is one of those things that draws a lot of people together and um, allows you to express express yourself and um, if you can't do that in your in in your normal job or in your workplace um you're having some other outlet to do that is so important um, because in the rigid, rigid sort of structures of work and, you know, in, you know, input output sort of, you know, transactional sort of stuff going on, you um, lose that, that creativity. I think at times you, you run the risk of that um, as kids, I think as children, their children are so creative because um, they don't know of about a lot of these structures. We kind of got to tell them about, how to behave, how to do this and that. Um, but anyway, I'm, I think I'm going off on a bit of a tangent now. Um, and yeah, okay, Ellen, our company uses all Microsoft programming tools. Yes, it's a great way to relax. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool, Ellen, that you've got your own, um, there, that you've got your own company and like running your own running your own show um and like you can take kind of like take it the direction that you want to that you want to take it um i think that's like one of the reasons why i started this as well so that i i can i mean i i, I love taking feedback from you guys and like suggestions and stuff like that um but i think the great thing is that i can decide where i go with all this it's very difficult running your own thing really um but at the same time, it's extremely, it's extremely liberating. It's one of the most rewarding things, um, you, you, you know, and especially in the, the context of these art tutorials and sessions that I've run, um, you know, I'm, I've never been a huge fan of social media and, um, it really, honestly, it does my head in if I'm not, if it's not for, um, if it wasn't for this stuff, I wouldn't, I don't use it very often. Right. 
Um, but in the context of these art tutorials, um, I found that I've been able to just reach a lot of people and impact more people um, on a one-to-one on -one level and, it, you know, um, on a wider scale as, as well. So I just reach more people. So it's been great, um, this whole journey. Um, you know, it helps me to improve my art as well. I'm happy with how this looks. And uh, we're going to continue on. Shinolan's asking a question. Um, no one's asking a question. Uh, what is atmospheric painting? What am I doing? I'm like I'm seeing it. I'm seeing, I'm seeing your um, the comments, no one, But my mind just I'm just gonna read it for some reason. I think I'm getting dehydrated. Let me have some water. Um, atmospheric painting is also called um, if we're talking about the same thing, aerial perspective. So. It's basically the sense of, you know, when you're looking into the mountains or when you're looking at um, objects or things really far back in the distance, you notice that they become softer. Um, the edges become left, less defined, especially when you're looking at kind of misty landscapes. Um, you also find that they increase in, um, in, in, in cooler, they become cooler in, in their hues um, and softer. So Things in the foreground will be sharper, um, have higher contrast as well, higher saturation. Um, but yeah, as you move back, less saturation um, becomes slightly cooler, less contrast. It kind of becomes blurry. So when you look at, um, uh, I mean, with this scene here, you've got a little bit of that and you can emphasize that sense of atmosphere by creating softer edges, things at the back, less detail, for example. Um, but yeah, if you Google it, have a look at some of like, uh, you, you see a lot of landscape painters that do natural landscapes of mountains, um, ranges and things like that. They apply that same, uh, those principles of atmospheric or aerial, uh, aerial perspective. Um, it can also mean things like implying mood. So the, the certain colors that you use as well indicate the time of the day. Now we've got really sharp contrast here because this this looks around midday, maybe just after midday, right? Uh, maybe the sun's just started to go over to the um, the west a little bit. So we're gonna have um, really high contrast with the ground. Ground is almost the same tone as the buildings, and um, if I create less contrast. And the darker sky, it may indicate that it's starting to get to, you know, the evening. So, um, yeah, I, I find like mood, atmosphere and mood are often linked together. Hope that answers your question, Shinolan. Um, let me know how you guys are going, those of you who are um, still watching along. And... Um, I'm really going to get cracking with this one. I think we can finish this off in another half an hour, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little bit, a little bit quicker than that. Um, Karen is asking, "What guidance do you have regarding sketching people?" Um, I'd say sketch them often. I I have a lot to improve on with my figure sketching uh, because I don't sketch them enough. I sketch buildings and I observe the shapes of buildings quite often, but figures, you, you know, what you want to do is uh, same thing goes with figures and buildings. Like if you're looking at simplistic figures like this, how can we reduce those figures down? I mean, this one here, for example, I've got the head in, which is kind of like a circle, an oval or a square shaped, a rectangle shape. So I draw that on the body is kind of like rectangular, a little bit rectangular shape with rounded edges. If you see that, or kind of like a like a potato, <laughs> almost looks like a potato. This this figure here, um, here maybe uh, this, this person could have like kind of a bit of a pear shaped body or a bit of a people are shaped in many different ways. So um, there's not really a right or wrong all the time with this sort of stuff, but uh, the proportions you got to be you got to be careful with. So um, you know if I put the head of that person up there, this person would look in, enormous. So the head has to fit into the entire into the entire figure about seven and a half to eight times. So you should be able to fit seven 
of these heads, seven and a half to eight of these heads into the whole length of the figure. Um, initially, if you're drawing and you're not sure, like try to measure them out, but norm but generally speaking, you might have some trouble um, in the beginning. So that's a little trick that, that I used to do, sort of try to like measure them out until it becomes more instinctual. Draw people, bring up references of people and just scribble them down. Don't, don't even, you just go with a pencil. Because drawing with a pencil is, um, as much as people separate drawing from painting, there are many similarities and many crossovers that you can learn from by drawing uh, people with, uh, yeah, just your, your, your pen, a pencil, a pen or a pencil. So um, I hope that gives you a few um, places to start off with Karen. Um, and then uh, Don's also here. Don's uh, said, I finally caught up with you and used a pen similar. Not sure if it's waterproof. We will find out. Hey, and, and you know, sometimes the non-waterproof pens, they, they have like a really beautiful effect when you wet the wet the ink. It kind of just spreads and looks really uh, beautiful and abstract. I did a, some little, some short videos on painting with a non, uh, sorry, a water-soluble fountain pen, which you can check out on, on the YouTube channel or Facebook um, if you're interested. And... Um, it's funny because I start off and the things they both that you know all the the buildings look really nice and not nice, but you know what I mean, like really detailed. And then suddenly I've got the water in it, it just blooms and goes all over the place. But um, after you look at it, and it actually not too bad. So um, for those of you who want to have a look at an example of a you know a sketch that I've done, and you've got a bit of spreading around. This is uh, an example. Get a few of these videos on YouTube. You can have a look. This is all done in water soluble pen. See, it spreads. That darkness, a lot of that darkness comes from the pen. This one as well, kind of cut around, and you can see some of that darkness spread around a bit there as well. Um, that one, got these two as well. This little one here, got this one here. Um, so, it, yeah, I think it's a. It has its own style. It has a, its own beautiful sort of style that you can play around. With. So um, let's go ahead and get cracking with this one now, and I'll check the chats in the, in a moment. Now, what I want to do for for this first is to put in a little warm colors and warm colors galore, and I'm going to use that paint that I had talked about before. This like a bit of that quinacridone gold color. Okay, let's drop that in like that. Now a lot of these buildings are going to be this same color. Um, look at that, that's beautiful gold sort of color. And uh, another thing is that we, we've got also this, it's kind of a Naples yellow slash uh, yellow ochre color running through the buildings. I want to emphasize a bit more of this kind of gold color running through the air, even though it's not 100% gold. Um, I, I just want to do it. And look at these, these buildings as well. I just want to get a little color in there, like that. These ones here, we're just going over the top of everything. Simplify this down. Okay, the edges, try to not go off the edges. If you get a bit going off the edges, don't worry. Just let it go into the sky, like say like that. A little bit like that is fine. Okay. Just helps so that you don't mix up too many uh, too many greens. Okay. That, look at that. Just just really quick. It's all done in one go. Painting bit is easier for me. There we go. Bit of this yellow up the top there. And by using a limited palette as well, you save yourself a lot of hassle by, like, you don't have to balance the colors as much. There's less colors in there, less variables. With watercolors, there are so many variables. If you reduce the variables down, you're going to have an easier time. So um, one of the ways to reduce those variables is to take out colors that you don't need. Seems like a good idea at the time. You've got all these colors, especially me. Um, 
you know, I really got to exercise a lot of self-control and I've got my palette here and there's just all these beautiful colors in there. I just want to use them all. But I know if I do that, I'm going to stuff it up. It's going to look like a clown show. So simplify down. Really, I could get by with two colors for this painting. Believe it or not, two colors, a bit of neutral tint and a bit of the yellow. But I'm going to continue on and I'm just going to do... I'm going to want to put a bit of blue in the sky. Um, perhaps a bit of that lavender as well. Obsessed with that lavender again. So I've got that big brush there. I'm going to stop with that. I'm swapping to a smaller brush here. And we can go... Look, I've also got some... What is this? It's just some burnt sienna. And I've got a bit of this geothite color as well. Let's drop in some of that in here, especially at the base areas of the buildings. I want to darken off some areas. I don't want it to all be the same color too. And some of this wet and wet work um, is fantastic because it allows you to get in soft transitions. Um, now all these people, look at all these people here in the foreground. There's a lot of stuff going on in here, right? Um, but as we move down the page, we're going to get a little bit of darkness running through the buildings and that's why I'm just trying to pick up a bit of extra darkness color running through here okay keep it very light very very light running through this section we don't want any um we don't, we, yeah we don't want any dark areas through this area through this um, section um here comes the sky now before I go into the sky I'm just going to give this a bit of a spray down the bottom so I can um Come back to it later, just a little like that. Okay, bit of a spray down. Now with the sky, uh, get rid of that color on the brush. It's actually a very muted blue up the top um, of the sky. I do have some cerulean here. Drop that in. That's unfortunately turned to a kind of greenish color. You've got to be so careful when you're using ceruleans or these light blue hues. They just turn to green if you're not careful. So I'm just picking up as much as I can and just drop that in there and see what happens um, like that. And I always paint around the buildings first. Here is some lavender as well. A bit of lavender. Because we've got some of these yellows, um, actually the lavender is more of a complementary color, in my view. So, you know, it may not look... Um, may not look uh, as accurate, but I think I'll stick with the lavender and maybe see if I can get some blending in areas like this. There, it's important while the while the paper is still wet to do some of this stuff. Um, this, you know, on the left, it's kind of already dried. There's not much you can do. Oh, actually, it actually has hasn't completely dried. So here, see, a little bit of that yellow mixing in like that. There, and drop that in. As, try to just do this as, in as few brush strokes as you can. Okay, and this is gonna hopefully granulate very nicely into the sky and get some um, interesting sort of results. You know, the rooftop of this tower there, just move around. You know, and, and notice some of this is already mixing into the mixing into the blue, the yellow, and the and the the, the violet. Lavender mixing together a bit, doesn't matter. Let it mix, not the whole thing, but you know, some areas, let it mix. Using this large brush to force myself to cut around. Um, this is probably too much, that bit here is mixed too much on this uh, building. A little trick, lift off like that. But I don't, I don't do I don't have to do too much of it, just a bit like that. Okay. There we go. More lavender and a bit of mixing around like that. There, here, um, here. Uh, and I love this granulation like effect. Um, some people hate it, but I really like it. Extra like effect there. I, I never know what it's going to do. Okay. I'm leaving that sky now and I'm going to move my, myself down to the bottom part of the painting and um, a bit of the quinacridone gold and I'm going to mix that 
skin with a little bit of neutral tint. And uh, if you've got Payne's Gray, that also is nice and work well. Um, just a little bit. Maybe a bit more of this Naples yellow in there as well. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting around some of the figures and the shapes here uh, so we can get some extra colors on for the shapes too. Okay, so it's not all the same stuff going on. A bit more yellow there. Um, here as well. This is a, uh, it's, it's slightly granulating color actually, <clears throat> which may be good for the ground. Get in some areas of this, uh, which, yeah, just the ground, I suppose. Yeah, a bit more yellow. <clears throat> Drop that in. There we go. Around the figures, around this one there. Well, there, here, there. Um, here. Um, good. Normally, I put like a big shadow running across the ground. I don't think I'll do it for this one. I'll I'll just leave it. More this gold sort of color running through. Perhaps a little darkness at the bottom, just to because it um, helps to indicate the uh, foreground sections. But apart from that, um, I don't really want to mess with it too much. Just a slight amount of darkness down here. It's it just darkens that yellow down. Some neutral tint, a neutral tint added to that yellow to um, create it's a slightly darker section down here. And uh, let's leave it, Darren. Hey, um, the figures, we're gonna start putting in some colors for the figures. And uh, to begin with, I'm gonna go with, um, yeah, just some complementaries and cool colors, really. And for example, this side, I've got a bit of ultramarine blue. I can drop in some of this nice, beautiful ultramarine, which is a deep sort of blue. It's different from the um, it's the cerulean blue or the, the hue I have in the sky of this lavender cerulean blue. A bit of that color in there. Um, we might even put a bit of pink in for the arms. Um, a little bit of pink hue there. Um, I'm going to leave that face there. Um, you know, this car we've got, it's really just a slight wash of neutral tint running across the car. So I'm going to put in some of that. It's kind of just a gray color. This is a, this is a neutral tint, a Mugello, uh, not Mugello, a Holbein neutral tint. And um, the neutral tint that I was using before, um, it, it just turned everything green. I, I love how... I've finally found like a decent neutral tint. Yeah, this one here, we got a bit of uh, color here that we can just put in. Let's go with some of this lavender, like that. Um, we're just picking out some spots. You know, this one may be purple. Okay, this one may be this color. Essentially, a lot of these figures are quite dark. Um, the shirts and things that they're wearing are, are quite dark. Or the cast kind of in shadow, so it's not a huge deal what color we make all the figures. Um, just as long as we've got a bit of color in them, it's fine. We can also leave them. Let's just leave the the shirts white as well. It's not a not a problem. A bit a bit more blue here. This is a bit of manganese blue hue. Yeah, manganese blue hue. The other stuff, it's just. Uh, you know, I've got some Payne's Gray as well. We can use a bit of that Payne's Gray in some of the areas, um, like here. I've got a figure here, for example. Um, some of these ones in the background as well, we can just indicate in and um, darken off a little. It's the head of a figure there. I don't want to touch that area there. There, you know, look, there's some more figures here. Okay. Touch and go, just touch and go. We're not trying to put in much detail at, at all. We're just trying to get in a quick indication of what all uh, colors and let it sort of spread around a bit. The blooms goes into other areas, just leave it. Uh, 
fix it up later. Um, there we go. A bit of color that for that one. Maybe a bit of red for the arm. Oops, too much. There we go. There. Bit of red for the face of some of these figures. Some color in there. That one's okay. There. Maybe this one. A bit of magenta or something. There. Um, and a bit of maybe a little bit more for this figure here. A bit of redness there. The arm a bit here. Oops. A bit there. Arm. Okay. Good. Okay. I don't know why I can. I'm just gonna darken these windows a bit. Something like that. Excellent. All right, I'm going to give this a real quick dry. Go on with the second wash, and we'll be finished. Hopefully, another 15 minutes. Alrighty, it's all dried off, all dried off uh, nicely. Um, I've just noticed this car, it's, uh, I'm going to probably have to bring down a little, it's kind of looking at a bit of an angle, look at that, it's kind of up, the back end is up, but uh, that's okay, it kind of looks a bit, it's not like stylized or something. A few little comments on here, we've got puffs. Uh, Puff Pets, Puff Pets uh, says, I love this so much on YouTube, only live watercolor on YouTube right now. Wow, like I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know, um, I thought there'd be a few more out, out there, but in, I think also doing these lives initially can be a little bit um, full on for people who are streaming because you kind of, for me, I also feel, um, I, I've got more experience now to know kind of how it's going to turn out, but initially I was really nervous doing these and thinking uh, the first few actually turned out, in my opinion, they turned out horribly. Um, it's like I forgot how to draw and paint because when you suddenly got people watching along, you freak out a bit, but um, I've certainly gotten over that a lot, well, a lot, a lot of better with it now. So thank you for stopping by, Puppets. Did you find my channel um, through suggestions or you just sort of, or just um, found it on Facebook or something like that. But yeah, good to have you here. And uh, Nerida says, wow, the sky is really colorful. Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. And uh, the granulation, I love that. Look at this. Look at, look at that um, granulation. Right. It's kind of like clouds. Um, fantastic. And I'm going to continue on everyone and we're gonna get in the, the remaining bits and pieces in here to bring everything together the shadows um, essentially just all, all we need to do 
and I'm going to be using simplify this down for everyone. I'm just going to be using neutral tint, okay, a little bit of neutral tint and some ultramarine blue, so that I can get a slightly purplish color for the shadows. But mainly, it's going to just be a neutral tint in here, okay, and um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um, follow the reference. So. Bit of darkness for that one. Actually, can I let's swap to a smaller round brush like this? Um, drop that in like that. Yeah, pretty dark this building, and um, I wanna make sure I have enough contrast in here. So coming down like this, it's also mixing and mingling with some of that previous color, which is interesting. Um, yeah, and in areas it's kind of resisting. It's weird. Yeah, we've got a bit of, I'll leave a bit of that light. Um, oops, maybe like that on top of that building there. Um, you know, here we might get a bit of a light effect on that one too, like that. Uh, you know, you can imply bits and pieces, different shadows and things like that. See, just a light uh, shadow running across the edge of that building there and maybe like this one we can go just color around the the car um you know again i'm gonna just emphasize that light here there a bit of that light cutting across the building and um paint this in the quickest way possible this pen uh and brush there left a bit of that Bit of that shadow running across the light running across that building um, this building is just pretty much going to be dark uh, this tower can however leave some bits of light running across the edges and stuff as well so don't certainly feel like um, you have to color the whole thing and in fact i think having a few different colors really um yeah just brings out the details more this it's important this rooftop here where we've got uh light some light here soften that edge just trying to soften this a bit better soften that edge like that and then we'll drop in darkness here and uh, we don't want to be too dark as well because it is quite far back in the distance yeah look at that and that will blend into the into the dome the top of the dome okay if it's too much just lift off a bit of paint like that, carry that down this wash and connect it on with that shape on the right. There are bits of highlights on the on the ground as well. Um, I'm just continuing continually sort of going back and trying to pick up some extra darks as well as we head down the page. Um, there, there, there. Now here comes the tricky bit. Leave the light on that building. Don't color that in. Because we've got that light source coming from that right hand side. So we need to leave some of that light in, in that building. Otherwise, it's not going to make any sense. There, we're going to have a bit of darkness here. Because, um, again, just indicating the light maybe um, hitting that side of the building, but being obscured and casting a little shadow on this side here. Um, um, it needs to be darker, actually. A little bit darker. But there, there, something like that. Um, in that section, also underneath the buildings, I'm going to pick up some darker neutral tint and try to get in some real kind of juicy dark colors running underneath some of these sections to help draw out the figures, especially these two figures like that. Okay, there's even some sections here that, um, you know, darkness underneath those buildings that that we can um, emphasize a bit more and again this is just a lot of this is just neutral tint and a bit of ultramarine blue to simplify it down because i don't want to yeah i i don't want to over complicate things and um, stuff up the composition the colors and so a bit a bit here it's just kind of shadow underneath the rooftop like there maybe a bit there oh that's really probably too loose you just lift off that, uh, stuff that a bit. But here we've got a darkness in the window, a bit more here, here, and 
here, here. I'm just adding a little bit extra, a little bit more darkness um, does help. Kind of uh, taking your time with this as well. You know, some of these separations on the buildings like that, um, that you don't have to draw them all in, just some of them there. Um, this area here is pretty dark underneath this building, so we got to imply some of that. Same with this section here. So um, I'll swap over to that number eight, number eight brush. That's it. Just simplify that down. This is all going to be the bit that's in shadow, kind of similar to what we've got back on the other building. In fact, I've missed out this one. Yeah. I need to drop in some color. That there, just a bit of that. Leave that edge, that building. I'm going to bring this one down and create more contrast. It's like a connecting section between this building and the building in front. It's not really there actually in the the reference, but I've emphasized this a bit more. Okay, there we go. Great. Um, this should actually be slightly darker in here as well, so I'm just going to darken some of that stuff down in here. Yeah, good. Um, now back to this part. More color, more darkness. This. There we go. More darkness. And here, underneath here as well, more darkness. And uh, more here, underneath here as well. But we're pretty much we're pretty much done with the the shadows on the buildings. It's that simple. Even if you go over the the shadows of the buildings in just one color and one tone, you you know it's it's best to vary these tones a bit, right? But um. Even if you go over it with just one tone, it's it's still going to look pretty good. But you got to have a strong sense of light and shadow in the scene. So look here, it's just again bringing down some of that color from the buildings, darkness from the buildings, and ending it way down on the ground here, base of the building like that. Okay, the rest of this um, now is going to be done in a small round brush. I've got some neutral tint here. Let's have a look. We've got this car tire, this, and we've got the other tire here. And then we're going to connect this up on the ground. Shadow underneath the car, this, and there. So important to leave that strip of light there and carry this kind of across this. That. Fantastic. Okay, got that in now. While I'm here, it does need to be darkened down more. More color in there. This one too. There we go. Bit of darkness in there. Um, technically, this area here should be a bit darker than the other side of the car because we've got this area is kind of like in shadow. Okay. Maybe a bit. Um, a bit more color here as well. That mainly darker on the back side here. Whoops, I've gone too far down, but um, let's leave that. The same thing goes for the figures. Uh, got a shadow here for that figure running to the left. That's all I'm gonna do, just a little shadow like that. Join the legs. Um, like that, we may put in a bit of darkness on that left side of that figure too, like here. Okay, some more here, a bit of darkness for this figure. Size that backpack away. They're holding on to. 
there. A bit of darkness here. Just a neutral tint. Get in the shadow on the ground like this. Okay. There. Connect that onto the, the feet. Like that. So this one here. Legs to the left hand side. Legs here. Just running directly towards that left. And to actually the, the shadows kind of come a bit further. They kind of to the front actually, but uh, something like this. Look at that contrast that it's that that we're getting between the shadows and then the figures. It's so crucial. Go dark here. Um, so important. These figures are kind of um, they're not they're not they're not correct in the position. They should be further down. Um, I'm gonna just do them anyway, but um, that's just a little observation. The heads should be further down. Kind of looks like they're higher up on a slope. So it's one little error that I made. It's small. I mean, they should just more be like here. See, the heads are more near the horizon line here. This heads are too high above that horizon line. Normally, if you want to apply a flat scene, you want all the heads to be completely in the same line, unless these people are very tall. So probably still get away with it because there's a um it's not too far off. But uh it's just a thing to keep in mind next time. One of the risks, you know, when you when you go in with the pen. Um right. Do that as well. There, there. Another thing, I mean, you can also reduce the size of them, uh, increase the uh, the size of them, I mean, but I'm not going to do that. There, a bit of darkness on the ground there for this figure. Yeah. Yeah, just soft enough here now, like that. Soft enough there and soft enough here. Okay. Um, we're pretty much almost done with these figures. Uh, where we got just a few more in the background. And just here's a bit of a line for those ones, a bit of shadow there for those ones, connected up like that. And here as well, you know, got a bit of shadow here for these figures. The legs sticking out, just running towards that left hand side. These Bits and pieces here, there's uh, figures here as well, here perhaps. Stuff in the background which you can't really even see. Okay. Maybe some hair for some of them as well. That. Under hair. Hair on that one already. Whoops. Covered his eye. Um, cool. Know if there are there any birds in this sort of scene? Uh, you know, in Egypt. Uh, normally I put birds and stuff flying around. They put them in. So just finding out. Look, I mean, here's just some extra dark. So make sure dark bits and pieces that you might add in here well um, but pretty much uh, let's call this one finished and i think it looks all right uh i feel like i should have maybe got in a bit more detail but it looks okay um i think i've implied what i sh what i wanted to in this scene i mean the, the could put in a few little birds off in the distance like that not too many though, just here and there. Okay, and you know later on I'll retouch this as well, put in a bit more detail. Um, and maybe some highlights. But let me know what you what you think. I'm going to take the tape off um, and assess the situation that we have. Oops, hit the camera. And uh, let's see. There's that one. Um, where's my tissue? I'm done here. 
There's the tissue. That is the finished painting. And we've also got the other one here, sort of Japanese scene that I've put through and um, both in, hard to have them both in at the same time. Um, the contrast in this one is a bit funny as well. Um, certainly I'm gonna go through and get a bit more darkness onto those trees. Um, a little later, it's kind of hard for me to get both in, you know, we'll do my best, something like this. This, key, this happens every time. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'm thank you so much for uh, tuning in today, and um, it's nice to have some new viewers in as well. Um, Margaret says I've done an amazing job. Um, I just love it. Well done. Thank you, Margaret. And um, you certainly will get there. You'll certainly get there. Just keep on, keep on uh, practicing. And I'm, I'm certainly got a lot to learn myself still, and um, you know different things to try. So you know we're always learning. And um, as long as we continue down that path, uh, we'll approach what we're looking for. So enjoy the journey. Angela Barbera says such beautiful colors and fabulous ink drawing. Um, the shadows finish the painting perfectly. Thank you for uh, the wonderful demo, Darren. Have to sign off now. Almost midnight in Canada. Thank you, Angela, and appreciate you being here um, in the dead of night. <laughs> I hope yours has turned out well. Just post it in the. Um, we've got a community as well. We can have a. We can post that on the watercolor mental community. Um, Marianne Levy, thank you, Marianne. Um, joining um and i'm glad you enjoyed it um fantastic so um that's pretty much it guys so you know like i said if if you would um if you're looking to learn uh, a bit more and you'd like to support me uh you can go to the um patreon go to patreon what uh, patreon.com slash watercolor mentor you can also, um, what am I trying to say? You can also go to watercolormentor.com slash courses and you can buy some courses from me. Um, that goes a long way to helping um, support what I do um, as well. And um, yeah, apart from that, uh, I'm just um, very thankful that I have you guys here and that it's... Um, making sense for you. YouTube, um, if you are not on my YouTube channel, um, would really appreciate if you if you go on there and um, if you like my stuff, you can subscribe, watch some of the videos on there. Um, if you're enjoying what you're enjoying these videos as well, please share it around, share it around with your friends and share it around on Facebook groups, on watercolor groups and stuff as well. Helps me get some more viewers in. Um, you, you know, it's almost like a bit of marketing, isn't it? And and uh, I tend to, uh, I, I, I want to spend more time actually painting than sending the events and things like that around. So, um, yeah, if you enjoyed, you think anyone else could, um, you know, definitely uh, make use of it, please, please share it. We'd really appreciate it. But, um, the, you know, here's the first one. Let me see. The contrast is a bit better when you have it separately. See? A bit better. I think the camera sort of stuffs up when I got both in at the same time. But certainly, like, I, I want to make these trees darker, as dark as these ones here. This looks a bit odd. It's a bit more darkness here. I don't want to get rid of all that granulation. I think that would be perfect. Maybe a bit more darkness inside the, the, uh, the building as well. This one here looks, looks okay. Um, I probably, again, I, I will try to um, flesh out some more details in the buildings. Um, I like that car. I, I, they spent a fair bit of time drawing it. And um, yeah, the only thing is obviously these people are too big on the left hand side. Now, if I put everyone else up so that the heads were around here it would make sense. But that's just another tip and observation you just got to just got to be careful of. Um, you know, these people would also be really small people. So it, 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 it really doesn't matter. But um, a little just observation. So I uh, will finish this one 
off <clears throat> and uh if you have any more questions post them in the chat otherwise i'll probably probably uh finish these off kate parbury's asking darren could you put down post your courses great teaching love the variations uh yeah hang on kate i'll just i'll just link you here in the comments if you check it there's that one and then there is Those are the two links. Uh, those are the two links, Kate, that you can check out. Um, those, are, those are the links that you can uh, I think they should work. I'll post them here on YouTube as well. Post them here on YouTube as well. Now, if you do sign up for Patreon or any of these, if you sign up for Patreon, don't feel like you have to hang around. Like if you, you can try it out for, uh, try, try it out for a month and then. Oh, what's going on here? For some reason I can't post a link on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, that's a bit weird, but I can't really post a link on, on YouTube. Um, I can post it on the... Uh, Facebook group though. So I'll put them in there. In case you're interested, take a look. I think YouTube's uh I think just YouTube's got like some kind of spam filters in there as well. Probably these these boy. Um cool. And uh thank you all again today. I will see you um I'll see you all again next time. Karen's got a, just a question. I'll answer Karen's question. She's asking, do I, have a, do I use a sealer for watercolors? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't use a sealer. I store them all in like a folder. Um, or in a, I've also got a plastic display folder too. So they, uh, I, I know there are some spray on ones <clears throat> that you can use. So might be something that you look into later. <clears throat> um, let me just, just, I don't know, I put that link in there. The F and up. Maybe it won't let. Okay. Well, looks like I can't really post. I can't really post links in YouTube for whatever reason. But um, appreciate you all being here. I'll catch you all. Catch you all next time.